see Pitt face Nebraska. Pitt off to a struggling 0-2 start for Dave Wonstadt. Bill Callahan, the head coach of Nebraska, a couple of former NFL coaches go head-to-head. -head. Others, we see the Oklahoma Sooners and Adrian Peterson, who was terrific last time out after struggling in game one. But they'll face the UCLA Bruins, a revamped team. And in the ACC, a very important matchup. Clemson off to a surprising 2-0 start as they face the Miami Hurricanes. Can they beat them two years in a row? John Saunders, Craig James, and... Welcome back to the Rose Bowl, one of college football citadels and the home stadium of the UCLA Bruins as they prepare to enter the stadium. Warm by the September sun, the anticipation of a cracking good football matchup today between these Bruins and the Oklahoma Sooners. There are some streaks of harsh reality to this third week of the new season. The Oklahoma Sooners apparently have to rebuild with young people this year instead of just reload as usual. The UCLA Bruins need to win this game to validate their return to the upper tier of Division 1A team. Oklahoma comes into this ball game one and one, having lost to TCU and beaten Tulsa. UCLA is 2-0, winning handily against San Diego State and Rice. The two teams have met three times previously. The Sooners have won them all. And hello again, everybody. Let's talk about a lot of things here in a hurry, Dan Fouts. First off, uh, the great running back Adrian Peterson got a little puff of extra publicity this week for skipping classes. Well, he was held out of practice on Monday and Tuesday. Did practice on Wednesday and Thursday. Bobby Stoops told us yesterday he will not start today, but you know he'll be in the game and he'll be in there early. Probably. Can UCLA stop this Oklahoma running game? They haven't stopped anybody lately. Well, recent years, they've not been able to stop anybody on the ground. So look for them today to crowd the line of scrimmage. In fact, they'll go so far as to take out a cornerback and put in an extra linebacker. The Bruins also have a pretty fancy fellow with tailback named Maurice Drew. Well, Maurice Drew is a junior, and he is a legitimate threat to go all the way every time he touches the ball. He has an incredible 13 touchdowns of 40 yards or more in his career. And whether he's coming out of the backfield or bringing kicks back, Maurice Drew is the real deal. I think one of the more entertaining spots to watch on the afternoon, though, is going to be right down there in the trenches, the UCLA offensive line trying to fight off that Oklahoma defensive front. I know this is just the way you want it, too, Keith, where the big uglies down in the trenches. But UCLA had better be aware of number 42, the great linebacker for Oklahoma, Rufus Alexander. He is everywhere. All right, back from his motor racing, let's join Todd Harris. Keith and Dan, you mentioned the off-field problems of Adrian Peterson of Oklahoma this last week. Well, the other star running back in this game, UCLA's Maurice Drew, had problems of a far greater impact. Last week at the Rose Bowl, while he was on his way to a career day of over 100 yards and two touchdowns, Maurice Drew's grandfather, 69-year-old Maurice Jones, suffered a fatal heart attack while watching his son play here at the Rose Bowl. Coach Carl Durrell told me it's the hardest thing he's had to do as a head coach, take Maurice Drew out of the game and tell him on the sideline what had happened. Drew left the Rose Bowl in the fourth quarter to be with his family at the hospital. So in honor of the man who drove him to school every day and even enrolled him in ballet classes to help with his ballet, with his balance, excuse me, Maurice Drew has added his grandfather's name to the back of his jersey for the rest of the year. Now the Drew family may be short one member today, Keith, but he's certainly not forgotten. Thank you, Todd. Sometimes a personal connection like that does carry a great deal of meaning to the young. The weather today is just about perfect. It's in the low 80s, like a drink of cool water for these two teams. The Oklahoma Sooners come in, boasting their usual tough, gritty defense. UCLA, on the other hand, is looking to move the ball, which they have done quite well against two relatively easy opponents. Bob Stoops now seven years at Oklahoma. There you see his career record, and among those uh, games include a national championship won and a national championship loss. Carl Durrell in his third season at UCLA, and his record 14-13. But he thinks this is his best team since he took over the head job at uh, UCLA. So we'll see. UCLA will have the ball first on offense because Oklahoma won the toss and deferred. Chris Marquis 
and Derek Williams will be the return people. And kicking for the Sooners will be Garrett Hartley. And the game is on at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. Ball carries to the back of the end zone, and it will be brought out to the 20-yard line. And for the UCLA Bruins at quarterback, it'll be senior Drew Olson, thoroughly seasoned, rehabbed from knee surgery of a year ago, fought off the challenge of Ben Olson in fall camp, and looks primed to finish his time at UCLA in style. 35 games, he has 450 completions, which is second in school history. Dan, I thought his, uh, in practice watching him the other day, I thought his arm looked alive and the ball was really stuck. Yeah, he's less hesitant now. He's more sure, he sees the field better, and uh, as you said, Keith, he's off to a great start to the season. Go from the 20-yard line, he'll throw it on first down to the sidelines, and he throws behind the intended receiver, Joe Cowan. UCLA starting lineup presented by Ameriprise. Backs and receivers. The Bruin tailback, a gentleman of note, Maurice Drew, does a lot of things. First play this season, 64 yards for a touchdown. Two games, has 362 all-purpose yards. And the tight end, Mercedes Lewis, also off to a big start. The offensive line, like Oklahoma, a lot of youth, but there's a mountain at weak tackle. Ed Blanton, senior, anchors that group. He's 6'9", 330. The ball's thrown sharply and good for a first down. Caught by Junior Taylor up around the 36-yard line. And Taylor is uh, slow to get up after being hit while making the catch. He was kind of hung out and exposed when he went to get it. He came down awkwardly and is trying to walk off uh, an injured leg. Yeah, a, a shot here across the middle. Olsen did a nice job of coming back to Junior Taylor. But it looked like this as he went down. It wasn't a hit or anything. Just as he came down to the ground right there. Oh, my goodness. That's a bad knee injury. The weight of the defensive back causing that knee to bend the wrong way. And he is a big-time loss if he can't come back to the UCLA Bruin lineup. It is first down from the 36 now for the Bruins. And Olsen turns, and this is Maurice Drew's first carry of the day, and he'll have five yards as he takes it out beyond the 41. The Oklahoma defensive unit up front. The ground shakes with this crowd. They rage, led by defensive tackle Dusty Dvorak. He, like Aodell, right at 300 pounds, and they are disruptors. Good, tough group. Linebackers, Rufus Alexander, outstanding. Zach Latimer, good. Clint Ingram, hobbled. And Demario Pleasant starting today. Secondary, three sophomores back there. Oniagetcha is the only senior. This is a blitzing defense. Pass completed. Again, thrown quickly and thrown sharply. This time, it's into the middle of Joe Cowan's jersey, and he makes the catch. And move the chains. Another Bruin first down. And even though the Bruins may have lost Junior Taylor for this game, Cowan is an accomplished receiver. Mercedes Lewis is off to a great start. He has nine catches on the year. And that tight end position is what hurt Oklahoma against Tulsa when Garrett Mills had a huge day last week. Now we get a different set with a double back. We get a man in motion, and the man in motion is one of the wideouts with great speed. The ball thrown to this side, however, to... Uh, Marcus Everett and he's got another first down as the play goes inside the Ford 35 yard line of Oklahoma and right now what you're seeing from Tom Cable the offensive coordinator for the Bruins a lot of quick passes this is a three-step drop get the ball out of his hand against man-to-man -man coverage on the outside missed tackle there by DJ Wolf and good thing that Darren Williams comes over or Marcus Everett may be in the end zone he, too, brings size and speed to the wide position. From the 34-yard line of Oklahoma, Maurice Drew carries for UCLA, and he's brought down right at the line of scrimmage. And the man that got him was Demario Pleasant, number 51, and Corey Bennett, number 97, in on the play. UCLA's had their problems when they've gone up against a team that's ranked. 2003, last time, only time in the last 11 games that they've beaten a ranked team. Second down and 10. Olsen throws it out to the side, and it is complete to Chris Marquis, who was in the running back position, and Marquis goes skating down the sidelines looking for the marker, 
And he gets just past it and picks up the first down at the 23. But look at how Olsen, looking to the right side of the field, knowing exactly where his outlet receiver was, knew that Marquis was coming down the sidelines with him and wisely gave it to the running back to pick up that big game. Throws it back. Chris Marquis in there right now in replace of, uh, of uh, Ma uh, uh, Drew, Maurice Drew. Keith, the game plan today for Oklahoma is to, number one, complete a pass, something they didn't do last week in the uh, second half against Tulsa. And then they got to find a way to shut down the great tight end for UCLA by putting Mercedes in the shop. UCLA is going to have to burn the blitz. Oklahoma will blitz 70 to 80 percent of the time and defensively try to stop the great Adrian Peterson. Michael Petrie, the fullback, is in the backfield. Now, he's a pretty good receiver, and the ball is handed away to uh, Drew, and, boy, I mean, the Sooners are looking for him. A moment now with John Saunders for an update in New York. Well, Keith, in the Taco Bell update, San Diego State on the road against the Ohio State Buckeyes. First play from scrimmage, Kevin O'Connell goes to Brett Swain, who takes it 80 yards for the touchdown. Perhaps the Buckeyes still feeling the sting of that last-minute loss to Texas. 6-0. They missed the point after. Third down and 10 for the Bruins. Pump fake. Blitz is on. Ball is knocked out of the hands of the receiver, Petrie, by Zach Latimer, who just leveled it. And it'll be fourth down. Latimer has the uh, fullback in man-to-man -man coverage. Right there, there's the fullback. Good pressure from the outside. It's, it's a blitz by Reggie Smith, and then there's the blow-up by Latimer, a former defensive end who's settling in quite nicely at the middle linebacker spot. Justin Medlock is in for a field goal try of 41 yards to get UCLA on the board first. Plenty of leg on it. Missed it. Hooked it. Kicking with the left leg it is pulled to the right side and uh, Medlock who has had some trouble with arthritis in, a, in his knee area jerked that one just beyond uh, the right upright. So the game remains scoreless and Oklahoma gets the ball next. The Oklahoma Sooners now will get the football for the first time today and they will begin from their own 24 yard line after the UCLA Bruins miss a field goal from there. Quarterback is Rhett Bomar, red shirt freshman getting his second start. Big guy 6'2", 214. You may see him running some today. He was a very good running quarterback in high school and he also was very good out of the spread or wish uh, the shotgun. And they go to a spread on the first play, and he's standing to throw, and he throws, and it is incomplete. And that's a very good defensive play by Trey Brown, the cornerback of UCLA, because the ball is well thrown. The Oklahoma starting lineups presented by Ameriprise, backs and receivers. Kiwan Jones starts at tailback today. Adrian Peterson, we told you, missed some classes. He did not practice Monday and Tuesday. Old rule in football, you don't practice, you don't start. And that's the way it is. The offensive line, pretty good one. Big old freshman in there from Atlanta, 6'6", 318 pounds, and he's starting. That's an unusual thing at Oklahoma. Here's Romar on a roll, going outside, gets tiptoeing down the sidelines and picked up some yardage. There's a penalty flag following the play, and it looks to me like the official has marked him out of bounds after about a four-yard pickup. Yeah, they're going to get 15 more yards, though, for the late hit. Bomar continued down the sidelines. You really can't blame the... Bruins for coming over and knocking him out of bounds. He was out of bounds barely after a three, four yard gain. But that's what we're going to see today out of uh, Oklahoma. Two fouls on the play, both dead ball foul, personal foul on the defense, number 41 and number 15. Penalty will be forced from the end of the play, 15 yards, first down. So Cassell and Havner each got a call, uh, Carl Durrell disputing the call that uh, two men had fouled on the play. But he was out of bounds when the last man made some contact. Now well, Cassell certainly got his money's worth. Not sure where Havner picked up his infraction. Doesn't really matter. You only get 15 yards. So that penalty plus the gain will move it out to the 43. 
where Oklahoma will have it first down. You saw some of the speed of Bomar running the football on that last play. He's pretty quick. He'll hand this one away to Juwan Jones, and Jones will get to the line of scrimmage, and uh, that's all. As the Bruin defense bowed its neck, it's young too. At defensive tackle, Chase Moline's a true freshman. As a group, they're slightly undersized. Justin Hickman is the only upperclassman. Linebackers, they're pretty fancy at linebacker. Spencer Havner, already an All-American. Justin London, tough guy inside. And true freshman John Hale is starting at the other spot. And Adrian Peterson has just entered the ball game, I believe, for Oklahoma. So the linebacking core of UCLA is going to be very busy when Adrian Peterson is on the field, and you might see four linebackers in there at one time. Well, when Oklahoma goes to two tight ends and two running backs at the same time, a lot of teams call that the 22 personnel, UCLA will take out a, a defensive back, a cornerback, and add a fourth linebacker. So it's four down linemen and then four linebackers. So here's the first appearance in the ball game for 28. They're gonna run a reverse this side, and it's gonna work. For big time yardage down the sidelines goes Travis Wilson. Touchdown, Oklahoma. How about that for a call? You load up the big guy, send him one way as a decoy, and a 56 yard sprint by Wilson. A brilliant call by Chuck Long, offensive coordinator. You know, everybody in powder blue is going to be looking for 28. From the right side of the screen, you're going to see after the fake to Peterson, a nice exchange with the quarterback. And then Wilson, all he has to do is get by Dennis Keyes right here, and he's gone. Because look at all the white shirts that are going to convoy him down the sidelines here. In fact, Adrian Peterson even down there throwing a block. The extra point try now for Garrett Hartley. Cody Freeby is the holder. The kick is up, and it is good. And Oklahoma jumps to a 7-0 lead at 10.47 to go in the first quarter on a 56-yard run off a reverse by Travis Wilson. It is not so very often you see Adrian Peterson used as a pure decoy, but he was that time, and it certainly worked because Travis Wilson had all of his buddies helping him down the near sideline for 56 yards. Yeah, you might consider that play a gotcha. <laughs> a gritty call, but they're out in the middle of the field. If you're going to try it, that's the place to try it. Chuck Long called it, and it came right after a personal foul penalty that gave Oklahoma that good field position. Right. And now let's see if the Bruins can generate some response. The kick is high. And Hartley, it goes to the goal line, and they're coming with it. It's Marquis. Boy, that's a, now that's a collision at the 15-yard line. College football on ABC Sports brought to you by Chevy, the new Chevrolets, an American revolution. ADT, America's residential and commercial security leader, and Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper, one taste, and you get it. Jason Carter on the special team, which is the one that laid the lick on Marquis as he returned it. They'll give him the 16-yard line for the spot, and it'll be first down Bruins with Maurice Drew in there as the single back. Olsen throws, pass is caught by Cowan. Cowan works for the marker, and he's a yard past it, and a first down for UCLA. Tradition at Oklahoma is hunker down and get on with it. And Bob Stoops put it this way yesterday. We have always been good here because, not because of talent, not because of anything, but, but to me it's been more about toughness and attitude and, and playing the game uh, with great effort and playing it physical and tough and and to me there's no substitute for it in football and, and that's what we need to continue to develop and, and work towards and that's what we're after. They will fight you. Another pass completion by Drew Olson to Mercedes Lewis to tie it in is a gain of about six yards on that catch and run. Uh, the one thing Oklahoma has been able to do in this first quarter is to shut down the run but they have not shut down the passing game. Olson's off to a great start. And he's dealing the ball to more than just Mercedes Lewis. Five different receivers have caught passes now for UCLA. They were only 
Almost five minutes into the first quarter. Cruz got it. Taken down behind the line of scrimmage. Pleasant came underneath to make the tackle for Oklahoma. So that's his second clean tackle. A moment now with Todd Harris. Well, Keith, during that last exchange, Coach Carl Durrell spent a lot of time with the tight end saying you've got to get involved. But an update on Junior Taylor, the split end, number eight. He went out in that first series and he has not returned. They tried to fit him with a full knee brace and had to walk up and down the sideline. He was able to plant, unable to cut, so now he's on the bench. It looks like he will not return. He's got the full ice bag treatment. Olsen throws, throws behind the receiver, Marcus Everett. And they... Do they get him? Yep, they do. They get him the catch. That's pretty good stuff. He reached back behind him with one hand and pulled it in. Yeah, that one hand was his left hand. Did a good job of... Uh, stopping the ball that was thrown behind him. Again, three-step drop, get rid of it quickly. Pressure right in the face of Olsen, but a super catch here by Everett. And it gives him a first down at the 40-yard line. Drew again, running in traffic. He didn't get back to the line of scrimmage. He lost about a half a yard as Pleasant one more time makes the tackle with help from Reggie Smith. Reggie Smith, another true freshman out of Edmond, Oklahoma. At the conclusion of today's game, Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevrolet making a $1,000 contribution to each University General Scholarship Fund. Five rushes, four yards for Maurice Drew. Well, up front, uh, Oklahoma's just too quick right now for UCLA. They are beating them off the snap of the ball. Ocean throwing. As a man, pass complete at midfield. Now I think it's catch it. complete. Keith, they drop was, it. Yeah, Anya Nakecha racked him up pretty good and knocked the ball loose. Anya Nakecha is uh, he's a tough guy. He does a lot of blitzing. Gavin Ketchum had the ball, but that's a great play by Anya Nakecha to knock it out. He gets help from all those Sooners on the sidelines, the officials do. All right, into the ball game now for UCLA is number 37, Baumgartner. We saw him working a lot with that first unit the other day in practice, and he looked pretty good. He's in the slot. Olsen looks the other way, goes down the middle with it. It goes to Mercedes Lewis, and there's a pretty good fight as two Sooners uh, jump on him. And they stop him uh, three yards short of the first down. Yeah, he's six foot six, 256 pounds, number 19 here going in motion. And this is how UCLA is going to try to keep him from being double teamed. You can see Reggie Smith comes up a little bit late. Williams is there for the tackle. But they will put Lewis in a multiple number of positions today to try to keep him from getting bracketed or double teamed. Aaron Perez in now for the punt. And... Uh, Waiting for it is Lindy Holmes. He's standing back around his 12-yard line. Snaps good. Kick is away. And Holmes circles under it. Almost dropped it. Holds on to it. Penalty flags all over the place. Holmes is taken down at about the 18-yard line. Jack Foliard is the referee. This is the same crew we saw last week work the Cal Washington game up in Seattle. Penalties against Oklahoma for a push in the back. Monday, ABC Sports, ESPN, and the NFL will join to help the victims of Hurricane Katrina with a Monday night football doubleheader throughout the evening and a special fundraising telethon. You'll have the chance to donate to relief efforts of our Gulf Coast neighbors who have so much need. At 4.30 Pacific, the Giants face the Saints, and then at 6, the Redskins beat the Cowboys with the conclusion of the Giants-Saints game moving over to ESPN, and those of you in the New York Gulf Coast area will see the Giants-Saints game in its entirety before you join the Redskins, Cowboys in progress. That's Monday night starting at 4.30 Pacific on ABC. The football has put him inside the 10. Uh, they're going to put it down at the 7-yard line, and there the Sooners will go to work. 
So it is be careful country and the senior Kewan Jones is in there at tailback. They go out of the spread ball fumbled by Bomar down on the goal line could be a safety. Uh, the line judge is coming in saying that he was down before the ball and he went into the end zone. Stephen Kovac is the line judge and he came in right away pointing to the ground meaning that it is not a safety but it was an almost a disaster that's a fine snap by Chester Looked like they were trying another misdirection play with Kawan Jones coming around well, let me see well, he got it back though the ball was in the end zone but it looked like he reached out and pulled it back now, this play can be reviewed upstairs and that's exactly what they're doing if you look at Jack Foliard. It'll take a minute, but we've got some pretty good views of the play, and the one from up high, I think, will be the most meaningful one. But here's, here's the first one. He reaches into the end zone, pulls it back. He's on his knees about a foot away from the goal line. I think that's an excellent call by the line judge. That's the fifth fumble this season by the freshman quarterback. And really, that's just a case of nerves. You're backed up almost to your goal line. I don't like this call, putting him in the shotgun, just because of this reason. If you have a bad snap or a drop snap, it can be a disaster. He pulled it back. He pulled it back before yep. contact. And he's, as you said, Keith, doesn't matter about the contact. His knees were on the ground. Yep. Well, he, he played the spread shotgun type stuff and ran a lot when he was in his high school at uh, Grand Prairie in Texas. He incidentally is one of 48 Texans on the Oklahoma roster. And offensively, you'll see him in the shotgun a lot today because of that. And also, they want to run some of that quarterback read game where they uh, option off the defensive end, something that Bomar feels very comfortable with. And when you're struggling throwing the ball, coaches have got to find a way to keep this guy, number seven, comfortable. So you go back and find out what do you like to do, what have you had success with, with in the past, and you run it. Taking a long time to make the decision, but I, it seems quite clear that he's with his knees on the ground. After review, there is conclusive evidence that the play was called correctly. Second down. That's right. It was called correctly. But now UCLA has to take advantage of this, regardless of getting the two points or not. You've got Oklahoma where you want them, 99 and nine tenths of the way, away, yards away from the, the touchdown. And second down and 16. Ruin players asking for a little help now from the faithful down in that end of the football field, and they respond with some noise. And you've got Runnels and Peterson in the I formation. If that was Owens Field and Norman, they'd crack the crystal. <laughs> Peterson to the outside. Pursuit. One missed him. Two missed him. Got him out of bounds. Trey Brown couldn't hold him. He's big and he's faster than you think he is. And he's got a good lead blocker in Runnels as he takes care of the true freshman, John Hale. There's a missed tackle. And that's the type of thing we're talking about. When you have a chance to make a play with field position in your favor like this, you can't afford to miss that tackle and let Peterson get it to the outside. He took it up to the seven yard line. Where it is third down and 10 now. That was the original starting point for this Sooner possession. Oklahoma leading seven to nothing here in the first quarter trying to recover from having been one foot away from their goal line. Bomar look comes back up the middle and he's close to that first down. Jared Page finally came up from the secondary to make the tackle and they'll put the ball just over the 15. They had to go to the 17 and it's fourth down. Pretty good catch by Bomar on that snap from Chester. But he's going to get killed if he keeps running like this. Watch Page hit him helmet to helmet and bend him over backwards. Trying to get that first down, he gets crushed. 
Maurice Drew is waiting for the punt now of Cody Freeby. Freeby is a sophomore out of Fort Worth. Uh, Drew is a sophomore out of Antioch, California. And it's short punt. Takes a sideways bounce and a roll dead just inside the UCLA 45-yard line. 6.32 remaining in the first quarter, and Oklahoma leads it 7 to nothing. Since the AP poll started in 1936, there's a rundown of the most national championships among the top teams with uh, Oklahoma just one back of Notre Dame. The ball is resting at the 44-yard line of UCLA and the Oklahoma defense first to come out. The Bruins are in their huddle and they're working, as you see, on Adrian Peterson putting new tape on his left foot. It appears the foot more than the ankle. Well, if you look at where they're putting that tape right there, it appears it might be a case of turf toe. Could be. Boy, is that painful. Olsen moving, throwing, incomplete. Led his man too much. Joe Cowan, now a moment with Todd Harris. Dan Fouts, can you believe this? We got two Keith Jacksons in the house. Unbelievable. Who is the real Keith Jackson, Keith Jackson? Well, I can become the real Keith Jackson if Keith Jackson quit working. But as long as he quit, keeps working, they said there can't be two Keith Jacksons in show business at one time. And so he still has the name. I'm going to get it sooner or later. Now, you need to retire so I can start working on TV. <laughs> Keith, he's doing radio tonight for the Arkansas Razorbacks. They play the USC Trojans. Tell me about your Sooners. What are you seeing? Well, when you watch the Sooners, you know, they did drop one earlier, but they're playing physical today. Everybody's saying the Sooners are not as physical, but they are playing very physical. A team that lost so many guys last year to the pros. Some of the young guys on the team are trying to learn their positions. They're going to get better and better as the year goes on. You and Dan Fouts in that exclusive club. I like the hat. Congratulations and good to see you. Well, tell Dan I can catch a ball from him if he comes down here. <laughs> All right. Keith, Jackson, the first. All right. Thank you. Good to see him again. Good guy. And a heck of a football player. Yeah, I'm not sure I can throw it far enough to get it to him, Keith. <laughs> Third down now and eight for UCLA. They still can't get much on the ground. The ball is thrown high. There was pressure on him. That was a sideways pass. And Maurice Drew runs it out of bounds. They call it incomplete. It was just enough forward motion. So it's a quick three and out for UCLA. Now they've run the ball seven times. They have five yards to show for it. This is the third of that three and out. C.J. Ayu with the good pressure. Sometimes it's not so much getting in the face of the quarterback, but getting up high and forcing the throw to be off target. Perez in for his second punt. Lindy Holmes is waiting for it. Last time, the Sooners had some penalties for illegal blocks. This is a low kick. Spinner. Holmes comes up. Fumble the ball. UCLA's got it inside the 20-yard line. You could see that ball never turned over, and it was backing up on Lindy Holmes, and he tried to track it down, and he never did get to it. And Michael Morris of UCLA on the special teams able to get down and cover the loose ball. Well, this is what has uh, plagued Oklahoma this year's fumbles. This is a muff punt by Lindy Holmes. But the, the ball not only never turned over, is backing up there. If there's any wind at all, that was uh, helping UCLA on that play. But this is one you got to make that decision to just let it go. Yep, leave it alone. So the ball is at the 19 of Oklahoma, and the Bruins are given another golden opportunity to do something here. Everett goes in motion, and you got the right side of the line breaking the snap count. Ryan Moya. And that'll probably back him up. Pretty clear UCLA was offsides. Question was, were they induced by the Sooners? There's no foul on the play. Prior to the flag, UCLA had called timeout. Number one. <laughs> well, whatever. Drell wants to know. Who called that timeout? <laughs> yeah, who did that? Who did that? Send him over here so I can talk to him. We'll take the timeout too. Five thirty-seven to go in the first quarter of play here at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California. Oklahoma on a fifty-six yard reverse early on in the first quarter by Travis Wilson leads the game seven to nothing. UCLA sitting down here with first down at the Oklahoma 19 yard line after the mupped punt and the Bruin recovery. 
Now let's go back to the well, they're coming out to play now. We'll get it for you, an update on Adrian Peterson after this play. The Bruin ground game hasn't done anything yet. But there's always the threat when Drew's on the field. Ocean throwing. Touchdown! Andrew Baumgartner. He's the guy we saw the other day in practice do so well, and he was wide open when the pass was on the numbers. Uh, he's the last guy you'd think would be a target for Drew Olson. He only has two catches this year. That's his first touchdown catch of his career, but he was wide open. Guy wearing number 37 lineup as wide receiver. You might think, ah, they're not going to throw the ball to him. Play fake to, to uh, Maurice Drew, set it up. Headlock now to tie out of the hold of Ryan Callahan. Good. So at 5.31 in the first quarter, we're all even at 7-7. Little fake to Maurice Drew and a strike from Drew Olson. D.J. Wolf was the man that banged into Baumgartner, but turned his back on him and scored the touchdown. This offense is working with the pass so far in this first half. Having real trouble getting any run started, but if Drew Olsen could continue to, to distribute the ball to all these different receivers, there's six receivers now that have caught passes. Baumgartner catching his first and taking it in. And now the Bruins can pick up their Darbra just a tad and feel better about themselves as we are in a 7-7 tie. And the temperature, as we told you, is probably with this much sunshine. Hayes going away. We'll get into the middle ladies down on the field. Yeah, the haze is going away and the smog is setting in. Todd, what? Well, we're still waiting for Todd. Todd's update on uh, Adrian Peterson. It'll be interesting to see if Peterson uh, comes out for this next series. Yeah. We'll Headlock now. Wax it. Pretty good carry on it. Yard deep in the end zone. It's coming out with Reggie Smith. First man missed him. Penalty flag goes down. Smith's got daylight on that sideline. These guys are hard to get when they get some space around them. And let's see about that yellow flag lying in his wake. It's going to be another long field for UCLA, or for Oklahoma rather. Bobby Stoops not happy. This ball is going to be uh, backed up inside the 10 yard line to start this next series. They're getting the return people in position to make big plays, but the mistakes the are return, killing it. Holding on the return team, number 35. The penalty is half the distance from the spot of the foul. First down. And now the update on Adrian Peterson from Todd. Well, Keith, again, it's his left big toe, somewhat of an aggravated turf toe again. They had to cut the sock off all the ankle wrap. They said he's going to be fine. They just retaped it. He's ready to go. He's in the huddle, and he'll come out with his teammates, and they'll pick up the ball at the seven-yard line, first down, at 5.22 to go in the first quarter. And remember, it's his left foot, so look for him to avoid having to cut off that foot. He's got it coming this way. Goes back the other way. And just like that, move the chains. First down. Chris Bush, right guard, leading on that play. So he picks up 10 and a half yards on that carry. again missed by the first man first man has yet to make a tackle on these running backs of Oklahoma for the Bruins John Saunders now with another update Keith we told you San Diego State scored first against the Buckeyes and missed the point after well Troy Smith for Ohio State calls his own number and goes in 14 yards they do not miss the PAT seven to six now they've grabbed the lead over San Diego State Keith 
San Diego State, one of the teams that UCLA defeated. As they open the season down there. The ball is given inside to Peterson. And he just gets a crowd around him and then carries him. Well, the play clock has been down, as you can see. So it's up to the official Jack Foliar to make sure the quarterbacks, both quarterbacks, have an idea how much time they have. Back in the old days, Keith, when I played, we didn't have such a fancy thing like a play clock, and the official would just uh, remind the quarterback sometimes that, uh, hey, getting a little close now. You got to hustle them out of that huddle. Not a single yard passing yet for the Sooners in almost three quarters. Omar working out of the shotgun. Goes down the sidelines, and that is out of bounds, incomplete. Out of bounds. James Moses over there running under it. Jared Page covering on the play. They just got a feel for Brett, Brett Bro Bomar. This ball is not a spiral. It's kind of wobbling, so it sails a little bit too far. Had his man. Excellent call by the officials as that right foot comes down out of bounds. And it brings up fourth down and three. And the Sooners will punt it away with Drew waiting. No pressure. Well, that's a beauty. A lot of air under this one. And it goes out of bounds. So they, they don't want Maurice Drew to get his hands on that thing. Drew Olson showing today how much he's improved from his beginning. I asked him about he's vision of the field. Here's what he said. You see about 55 yards now. I think before you see about wherever your number one target is. <laughs> now it's, uh, you know, it's great. You can go back there. If one, two's not there, you know you got three. And so, you know, just having that in the back of your mind is awesome. And he's been practicing it very well. So far, dropped the ball. Fight for it underneath. Sooner say we got it. Nope, they don't. You can see the official right there. Saying down, he's down, UCLA ball. Wind the clock. Bruins keep possession. This is unusual because this is uh, Mike McCloskey, a senior, snapping to Drew Olson. This is something they've probably done about 10,000 times. Unusual to see the experience dropping the ball on the ground. Or it's second down and 10. Going. Short. Drew. Helmet comes off, hangs on to the ball, and takes a solid whack. I'll tell you one thing, the Sooners are hitting. They may wear down if they keep up this pace eventually, but at the same time, UCLA might get a little tired too. <laughs> they might be just a little bit bruised. When you get your helmet knocked off, that's uh, that's serious. Olsen seeing the field again as he came to his outlet receiver that time. And you can see the not much of a comparison here as Red Bomar still looking for a completion. It's one of our keys to the game for Oklahoma. Complete a pass. Chris Marquis is in there. The play goes dead when the helmet comes off. That's uh, the rule for the sake of safety. Time called by Oklahoma. But it's amazing at how bad the hearing gets by the defenders when they see a guy's helmet come off. They don't always hear that whistle. <laughs> That's right. We're in a tie game at the Rose Bowl between Oklahoma and UCLA. 2.14 to go in the first quarter. Sooners called the last time out, and the water bucket got on the field in a hurry. These two teams started their fall camps, and both of them were living and working in mid-90 degree temperatures. So mid-80, not going to bother them much. On third and eight, who is in the backfield? Who also is throwing the ball is batted down and incomplete, and UCLA will have to kick it away. Rufus Alexander looked like the man to get his hand on it. Now, Rufus Alexander is, is everywhere. He's the smartest 
defender, according to Brent Venables, the defensive coordinator, thinks of uh, the game and coaches from a coach's perspective. And when you have that as uh, with an athlete as good as Alexander, you get plays just like that. UCLA now one for five, trying to convert on third downs. Jawan Jenkins is deep as Perez settles in to punt. This will be his third of the day. Oh, this is one that can be run back at the low line drive down to the 18-yard line. First man misses Jenkins. Second man missed him. Third man got him, but he's all the way out to the 33-yard line where it'll be first down for Oklahoma. TV Guide calls Invasion TV's best new drama. Something happening to a family that'll change their lives in ways they never imagined, and it's not what you think. Invasion begins Wednesday night at 10 Pacific. It follows the season premiere of Lost only on ABC. This is the best starting field position for the Sooners, and you, you wonder how long will Stoops go with Rhett Bomar, or will he try the two-quarterback system and bring in Paul Thompson? Thompson is ready to go, but he hasn't exactly set the world on fire himself. And he started the first game for him. Ball is handed away. And it fumbled. Bruins have a shot at it. Oklahoma, I think, may have been able to get to it. Let's see. As they unwrap them. UCLA ball. So mistakes, mistakes, mistakes. Oklahoma's lucky to be even. Watch number 11 here. This is Dennis Keyes. Watch as he comes up on Peterson. Peterson thinking, hey, I've got a big game going here. That ball bounces back about 10 yards and a lot of blue shirts underneath there to dig it out. Great hit by Keyes as he drops his helmet right on the football. That's why the football bounced so far backwards after contact. And the Bruins get it at the 34-yard line. Eight turnovers and nine quarters so far this season for the Sooners. Last night. Got an eye formation going. Drew Olson looking to throw, has no time, no chance, as Demario Pleasant, who stepped in as a starter at that uh, outside position, he makes four tackles now. And that's his first sack of his Sooner career. But you noticed how Olson had to stop as he was getting up into the pocket, held the ball a little bit too long, and right now the Sooners are starting to figure out how to get pass pressure. Knocked the pass down on the last series of plays open up this series with a sack and put the ball back at the 38 yard line a loss on the play of four it'll be second down and 14. <laughs> and a man all alone out there on the sidelines that's Everett. Everett got away from the first man and is close to the first down marker looks like he may be a yard or so short and that's really good job by Olsen reading the coverage. He saw the blitz was coming. And although he dropped the ball out to uh, Everett on the outside, Everett pretty good at this little move to get extra yardage down the sidelines. Mercedes Lewis on that play was wide open going down the middle of the field. Everett's a sophomore, 200-pounder out of West Hills, California. Third down and one. They haven't done anything on the ground, but they tried then, and they're not going to get it. I mean, he's he just smothered. He never saw the line of scrimmage. Corey Bennett, the first to hit him. Well, it, it doesn't matter if it's Bennett or Aodell or Thibodeau or Dvorak or Ayu. They are just beating UCLA to the punch. The penetration has just been incredible. As soon as uh, Maurice Drew gets the ball, there's a red helmet right in his lap. So here's uh, Medlock, Justin, in to try to give UCLA its first lead in the ball game. 7-7 with 13 seconds to play in the first quarter. This is a 44-yard try, and it's good. 
It's good, and UCLA goes on top 10 to 7, and they did it because of another Oklahoma mistake. A fumble, ball knocked out of Peterson's arms by Dennis Keyes, and the Bruins get some points out of it. Three. Justin Medlock is quite a weapon, but speaking of weapons, I mean, here you're looking at a, whoa, that's Big Bertha there. And he is awfully upset that uh, he fumbled that ball. When you get down the field like that, you start thinking, maybe I can go all the way. At least that's what I'm told. And uh, maybe a little lack of concentration, but got to give Dennis Keyes a lot of credit for a perfect tackle. Also wonder about uh, the problems off the field with the being disciplined. Held out of practice Monday, Tuesday, and not starting this afternoon's game. Rules are rules. In all things. Headlock now will kick it off. 10 to 7, UCLA leading. Wilson circling back with Smith in the end zone. He's three yards deep and he'll stay there. It'll come out to the 20 yard line. First down. Carl Durrell wants to get his team to the next level. He wants him in that top 25, if not the top 10. This part of our conversation earlier this week. Games like this, you have to have some, some continuity and some ability to keep, create balance or, or control the line of scrimmage. You know, you got to have a defensive line that can do the same and an offensive line in, in the caliber of opponent like an Oklahoma or, or uh, any other of those top programs in the country. So uh, we feel we're on the verge of doing some great things, and it's a matter of time for us to, to get ourselves in the same line. The offensive line today for UCLA is going to have to do some talking to itself. They have not been able to handle the defensive front of Oklahoma. Not been able to move the ball at all. Very seldom can you win without doing something on the ground. This is Peterson, and there's a loss, and there's something for Justin London. End of the quarter as Justin London cracks through and takes Adrian Peterson down for a loss of about four yards. It's 10-7. UCLA after the first quarter. Justin London, the linebacker, very steady presence along that defense for UCLA, making a, the tackle on Adrian Peterson for a three-yard loss. Big play, second down, 13. Anytime you get Peterson behind the line of scrimmage, it's a big play. He's not on the field now. Uh, Gutierrez is in there. They swing the ball to the outside, and that first move again frees the Oklahoma receiver, and he takes it up to the 25-yard line. That's in Joaquin Inglesias from Killeen, Texas. And that's the first pass completion for Rhett Bro Bomar. He's got to make him feel good. It's a nice, safe pass out to a wide receiver on the wide receiver jailbreak screen. And he's off the schneid. Kind of. Kevon Jones checks in now at, uh, as the deep back alongside the quarterback who goes for the shotgun here. On third down and five, throw it, pass caught, and it is in places again. Slant, good to the 35, 37 they'll give him, and it's first down. Page was coming on a blitz, but he didn't get to the quarterback in time. Watch the blitz. Number four is Page. He drills the quarterback, bounces him on his backside, but Bomar hangs tough and fires a strike. Big first down there for the Sooners as they start to move out from bad field position once again. Now Peterson is back on the field at the deep back position. He's got it coming right. And the Bruins get to it. He's going to have gain up to about the 39. Again, it's Jared Page, who's now suddenly kind of taken a hold of the throttle on this defensive unit. So made two plays in a row. Yeah, defensive coordinator Larry Kerr said that he's going to be 
very much involved in the run defense against Peterson because he's a strong safety. He's got great size, 6'2", 220. There's Larry upstairs calling the plays. Normally we've seen him in the past down on the sidelines. Peterson's out, they go spread. Gilmore back there by himself. And run it. Quarterback draw just pulled it down and took off like a tailback in an old single wing, trying on third down and five to get that, or second down and uh, eight to get that first down. And the mark is well upfield, but London may have stopped him just short of it. Yeah, huge hold there. Nice job by uh, Chris Chester up in front there as center. The converted tight end from Tustin, California, doing a nice job there. You can see Bomar starting to get, settle in a little bit, completed a couple of passes on this drive, and now he gets a, a nice gain on that play to bring out the chains. Nothing like running the ball to get your jitters uh, under control. Football teams that run the ball are tough football teams. That's about a half a yard short of the first down. UCLA's run offense, 10 attempts today, negative one yard. Maybe the Sooners don't think that uh, they can beat him with the pass. There's the try for the first down. That's close. That was Peterson. He slammed into the middle, and two Bruins hit him. Bulls waddle. Justin Hickman, one of them. The other one was London. Yeah, check out the middle linebacker, number nine, Justin London. Standing next to Spencer Havner. London stays low along with uh, Havner. They bring Peterson down. And again, uh, I don't think he got it, Keith. Doesn't look like it. He spins there, and he's still he's still a good uh, six, seven inches short. Mm, that's close. It's six, seven inches. <laughs> that's what I said. I heard you. <laughs> Well, last week, the play of the game for the Sooners was this fourth down and one in the fourth quarter. Peterson ran all over Tulsa on his way to a 41-yard score, and the Sooners went on to win 31-15, and they're going again. They need uh, about a foot. Bomar pitches. Peterson's got it. And I think this time he may have it. London again on the tackle for UCLA. So Justin London's been involved in the last five tackles. Nobody is blocking Justin London. And he's just mirroring the tailback, Adrian Peterson. Peterson with a, a spin move at the end of contact may have gotten the Sooners their first down. Not going to be my butch. Length of the ball. Not quite all of it, but enough of it. And it is first down Oklahoma. So we used two minutes and 50 seconds trying to get that first down <laughs> for the Zooner. Didn't come easy. Yeah, you, you can't blame London for going low on Peterson. You've got to wrap his legs up because he, if you go high, he's got the strength to knock you off and, and go the distance. But because London went low, Peterson's strong enough to twist and turn and pick up that first down. He didn't get any help on the top level, did he? Nope. Well, here are the Sooners first down at their own 47-yard line. Some pressure, the ball thrown downfield, and it is caught, looks like. Travis Wilson goes up and beats Marcus Cassell and makes the catch. Now Wilson's got three inches on Cassell. This ball is going to float for an eternity for Wilson. Look at the ball way up in the air. That's just a great effort. Cassell was right there, but the strong hands of Travis Wilson 
hauled that ball in. As you can see, Cassell was trying to knock it down with his right hand. Great play by the uh, senior wide receiver for 27 yards, Travis Wilson. Two big plays for him today. First down at the 26 now for the Sooners at the UCLA 26. They trail by three. They're looking for the lead. The 10-7 ball game goes to Peterson. Bouncing to the outside. And coming across to make the tackle is Jared Page. But he got something out of nothing because he bounced off the block of Chashon and took it down to the 20. One of the Bruins' best defenders, number 41, is Spencer Havner. He's got over 300 tackles in his UCLA career, but he gets taken out of the play by J.D. Runnels. He was tackled. Yes, he was. Peterson now with 32 yards on 10 carries. That jump, flip it outside. It comes to Gutierrez. And Gutierrez is inside the 15. That will be another Oklahoma first down. That had the old wishbone look to it or the option stuff in it. As he faked it to Peterson, which you have to respect, and then he flipped it out to Gutierrez. There's the fake to Peterson, and it's a little, uh, that's that quarterback run game that uh, the Sooners want to get Bomar involved with. That last tackle, the very first of the game for Spencer Havner. Ball is on the 13-yard line. And we've got a timeout. It is charged to UCLA. Adrian Peterson's having a bit of a hard time today with his legs and his feet. Todd Harris with an update. Well, Keith, earlier in the game, he came out and he actually removed his football pants and worked on his right hamstring. Now, whether it was a cramp or a pull at that point, we weren't sure. But after that last play, he asked to come off. And Jerry Schmidt, who is the strength coach, who's one of the best in the business, has him doing a series of hamstring stretches. So we'll have to keep an eye on this, whether or not it's going to affect him the rest of the game, Keith. All right, Kevon Jones replaces him, and Bomar gives it to Jones. And Kevon looking in the middle. He doesn't have the power of Peterson, but he is very quick. Second down and 10. Yeah, he's no slouch. As the senior has scored 32 touchdowns in his career. He's gained over 2,000 yards, but... He's not as big as Peterson. He is only 190 pounds. Peterson goes about 220. On Getcher, the uh, defensive back for Oklahoma, also was down on the ground a minute ago, getting trying to get some cramp out of his left leg. Ball is on the 14-yard line, second down 11, and Hickson is in there on the 35. For Oklahoma now on the left side of the quarterback. He gets the ball, goes right up the middle. Nothing fancy, just... Hammers away to the 10. So with the ball on the 10, it'll be third down and seven for Oklahoma. The ball is on the UCLA end of the field. And the Bruins are leading the Sooners 10 to 7. Two people coming onto the field for the Bruins. Oklahoma. Oklahoma only one out of four, Keith, on third down conversions. On third and seven. Has some time, a lot of time. Now the ball is knocked loose from him, but there was a penalty flag that went down before the ball was knocked away from him. And Dragovic was the man who came around defensive end and had locked on the quarterback. Dragovic saying, I didn't hear the whistle. That's why I kept going. And that's why I knocked the ball out of the quarterback's hand. Probably a false start against the Sooners. Ball was blown dead before it was snapped. Prior to the snap, false start, number 89 offense. Five yard penalty, second down. Time for our Nissan drive summary. It's been a good long drive for Oklahoma and it's been this man, Rhett Bomar, who's provided the key plays. He's three for three on the drive, but Adrian Peterson may have injured his hamstring on him. Peterson's coming back. On third down and 12 now. With the ball at the 15-yard line. Peterson's come back on the field. He's back there with Bomar. Bomar looks to throw. Gets it away into the end zone. It is incomplete, intended for Quentin Cheney. 
All right, that ball should have been caught. That was a fine throw by Bomar. Cheney, a redshirt freshman, just couldn't quite haul it in. This is part of the problem Oklahoma's had this year. Inexperienced wide receivers at six foot five, ball thrown where it should be, nice and high. Let them go up and get it. Got to bring that one home. All you quarterbacks talk like that. <laughs> Especially, especially <laughs> sitting up here. <laughs> you get a field goal try now from Garrett Hartley of 32 yards to tie the score here in the second quarter. And it's no good. Wow, it hooked around the post. It, it landed right in the middle of the goal post, but it went around the right upright. Look like one of your three woods, Keith. <laughs> yes, my three woods are usually about six feet off the ground. 9.28 to go in the half. It's a Bruins pep band. They're not in school at UCLA yet. His classes have not started. He's got cool uniforms, though. Yeah. Let's look at young Hartley there. And that big high hook. Looking just beyond. The upper. Bruins coming out to the corner. Throw it to the outside. Got a man over there. Wide open. And he just dropped on down the sidelines. Mercedes Lewis. How does a guy six foot nine get loose lost like that? Well, that's what the formation will do for you sometimes. You, you move them around, you get them out wide. And man-to-man uh, -man coverage, sometimes it just gets lost. That's just a uh, real heads up by both Lewis and his quarterback, Olsen, to see that and pick up a huge play on first down. He got 20 yards out of it. Chris Marquis in the backfield now for UCLA. Marquis cuts it back into traffic, and that may be the biggest run of the day. I guess uh, Maurice Drew had five yards on his first carry. Now Marquis picked up just about five, maybe a little less. Marquis is a solid backup running back for the Bruins. Had a huge game in Eugene last year when Maurice Drew was injured. Mike McCloskey, the center, has come off the field for UCLA, shaken up. And Aaron Meyer is listed behind him, a freshman out of Luling, Louisiana, which is also where uh, uh, Chris Marquis comes from. This is a huge loss for UCLA if their senior center, McCloskey, can't go. Is he, uh, we've already seen a fumble between McCloskey and Olsen. When you get a new center in there, it's to be a nervous time. Well, he's walking around all right. The Bruins have now called a timeout, and that is their last one of this half with eight minutes and 41 seconds to go. And they will take the timeout. And we're off across the country to John Saunders. Key for the BCS Spotlight game presented by ADT Update. Clemson against Miami. Miami scored first on a field goal, but that's Charlie Whitehurst. Eight yards to Cole Downer. 7-3 to three is the lead, and Clemson with the ball now marching again. Back to you, Keith. Well, Tommy Bowden's kind of quieted the thunder and lightning in South Carolina right now, hasn't he? He has a way of doing that, doesn't he? Always yeah. seems to be in trouble. Yeah, well, he's, Gets he out of it. Having Steve Spurrier come in, you know, it's probably given him a little more breathing room, too, because <laughs> Steve stirs up the milk. Time for our Pacific Life game summary. OU got off to a great start on Adrian Peterson's first play of the game. They're going to fake the ball to him and give on the reverse to Travis Wilson. And he's going to take it 56 yards for the touchdown. But things uh, got a little hairy for OU. That muck punt by Lenny Holmes, recovered by Mike Norris, led to this 19-yard touchdown pass from Drew Olson to Andrew Baumgartner, 10-7 UCLA. Bruins come to the ball now. Second down and five from the 45. They run it to the right side, and it comes to the line of scrimmage. Chris Markey carrying, and Zach Latimer won that by a round. He took him right down. Latimer, the former defensive end, this is just his third start as a middle linebacker, playing with a couple of great ones alongside. 
Rufus Alexander. Clint Ingram is not playing today. He's got a bad hamstring, but Demario Pleasant has done more than enough in filling in for Ingram. Third down, a long four. McCluskey is back in. I think that timeout was taken just to get him to come back in. And that's the receiver for UCLA falls down, got tangled up with Yona Getcha. And the ball sails away. And finally, here's the flag thrown at that spot. And let's see what they call here. They, they ought to be conferencing to see if this ball would have been catchable. It's, it appeared to be overthrown. I think Olsen. On the defense, number 22. The ball is placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Is that little push that uh, I think probably cost him on it. Otherwise, it might have not have been called. I'm not sure that ball was ever going to be caught because no. Olsen saw how close Anya Nagetcha was to the receiver. I think he threw that one high on purpose. <laughs> well, he's got a first down out of the penalty. Yeah, that works good. 43-yard line for UCLA on the Oklahoma side of the field. Bruins still leading by three. And this is an end around with Marcus Everett carrying. And uh, the wide receiver is going to pick up six yards on the play. Again, it's a trick play right around midfield. It worked for Oklahoma, as we just saw. This one well executed, but uh, not nearly the number of yards, although it was a positive play on first down for UCLA. They're searching through the playbook, Tom Cable. I'm sure that uh, Tom's had a lot of conversation with that offensive line, too. That's his baby. Second down. Short five. Olsen throws it off the hand of Mercedes Lewis. Trying to move the pocket is Tom Cable. Sooners had been zeroing in on Drew Olsen in the classic drop back spot, but they roll him out this time. He has a clear throwing lane to his big tight end, and Lewis can't get his other hand on that ball, but he's got what he wants, single coverage on strong safety, Darian Wilson Williams. Drew is in at the single back, Maurice Drew. Olsen throws it again, throws it very hard and misses Everett. He was trying to get him just past the marker and drill the ball into him and he couldn't do it. Now time for this week's AFLAC trivia question. Who was the only UCLA Bruin to be selected first overall in the NFL draft? Ah, uh, just one Bruin. Yep. I'll have to think about that one. What? Never mind. I got it. Oh, fourth down. Buck trying to pooch it up, kill it deep. That's going to carry, carry, carry to the one-yard line and into the end zone. Perez couldn't kill it down there. And so it'll come out to the 20 for Oklahoma. College football on ABC Sports brought to you by Nissan, who reminds you to ship the way you move through the world. Aflac, ask about it at work. IBM, become an on-demand business. IBM can help. And Napa Auto Care Centers, Napa, get the good stuff. It appears Adrian Peterson is feeling okay. He's going to join his teammates on on the field for this series. And it's a big series as we get down to the end of the first half. 7.03 to go in the second period. Peterson's lined up deep. Omar dropped the ball. Has to cover it. Loss of a couple of yards. Here the ball came up short to Bomar from uh, Chris Chester. Remember Chester used to play tight end. That ball never got off the ground. Never got off the ground. Slipped out of his grasp before he could get it up to the quarterback. Chester comes from Tustin, California. No second down. About 12. Peterson's out. Kewan Jones in. Bomar wants to throw it, goes deep down the sideline, and it is incomplete. We're to get coverage by Cassell on Wilson. Inexperience, expectations. Uh, they don't necessarily go together, but uh, let's talk about it with Bob Stoops. 
I don't want to sit here and make excuses just because we're young, but, but in the end, we uh, don't have the most experience or in, in maturity, and, and we're developing that. Um, uh, I believe we're capable. Uh, I believe we're better uh, than we've played, and we've got to show it. The Big 12 Conference doesn't get into conference play until October 1st. And then everybody plays everybody. So that's when the conference game starts. Ball thrown to the sidelines and uh, incomplete. Pretty good wrestling match going on between Cheney and Trey Brown and Brown won. Yeah, ball thrown just a little bit too far to the inside. That allowed Trey Brown to recover and strip the ball from the uh, true freshman or the redshirt freshman, Quentin Cheney. Watch this ball is thrown to the outside. Cheney doesn't have to reach back. But boy, when you've got coverage as tight as Trey Brown had on that play and Marcus Cassell on the previous play, the Bruins are in good shape in their secondary. Defenses on both sides kind of taking control here for a little bit. Maurice Drew is waiting for Cody Freeby's punt. This is where uh, Drew can really hurt you. That's a short high kick. Takes a good bounce for Oklahoma though. It goes inside the 35 yard line. No chance for Maurice Drew to get a hold of it. So the ball is at the 35 where it'll be first down for UCLA. Six minutes and one second to play. Ball is on the 35 yard line, now belongs to UCLA. They're into the field and they lead by three points, 10 to 7. Sooners have had the greatest share of mistakes today with dropping the ball, turnovers, and things like that. Penalty. And the game remains pretty tight. That ball's going across the field by Drew Olson, and it's very clear, it's very near the uh, First down marker over there. It's Marcus Everett who's had a, having a big ball game. Junior Taylor, who starts at that position, was hurt early on in the ball game on the first pass, actually, and has not returned. Looked like he hurt a knee. Good first half for Drew Olson. Has yet to throw an interception. In fact, UCLA has yet to turn the ball over in uh, two and a half games so far. I'm sure that uh, Bruin fans are saying, "Shut up! You're going <laughs> to jinx us." But those are the facts. Four catches and 49 yards now for Everett. A little quick one over to the sidelines. That's good for the first down. He was a half a yard short. Everett again. Reggie Smith's on that side, and he's giving him a lot of room. And as long as he's going to play four or five yards off of him, uh, they're going to keep throwing it to him. Now, what you got to be careful for now, if you're Reggie Smith or a cornerback, is the hook and go. Or you fake that short route, just head on down the sideline. But Oklahoma's trying to put pressure on the box. Eight guys up, so that's exposing man-to-man -man coverage on the outside. First down, just short of the 49. Here goes Drew. Maurice Drew, biggest run of the day. Down to the 32-yard line where Zach Latimer makes the tackle. He almost got away. 20 yards on the play. Well, how important is it to have the center Mike McCloskey back in the game? Watch 59 here as he opens this hole. And that's the other danger of crowding the box. If you don't stop them at the line of scrimmage, especially a guy like number 21, there's the double team on the nose man. This man, Maurice Drew, can go all the way. At the 32, first down. Olsen blitz. Ball got in the way, got it off to Ketchum. And Gavin Ketchum is able to retain it as he is leveled a yard short of the first down. Here's the answer now to our Aflac trivia question. Who was the only UCLA Bruin to be selected first overall in the NFL draft? The answer is Troy Aikman. 1989, he went to the Dallas Cowboys. He started his career, Troy did, and Oklahoma broke his leg in a game against Miami. Game that I did, as a matter of fact, along with Frank Broyles. And uh, then he was laid up for a year, and Barry Switzer, the coaches, had decided to go back to the wishbone, and that made Troy available, and they contacted UCLA, and that's how he wound up playing the third on Olsen got happy feet there, and you may get a holding call coming here against the Bruins. That's about time we saw Dusty Dvorak show up today. 
as he's going to pick up this sack. They will refuse this penalty because it's going to take uh, UCLA back to a third and ten. Right in the middle of the screen here, Dvorak's number 94 working on McCloskey. You see that left hand of McCloskey, that will get the flag every time. Well, Dvorak is a load. And Dragovic, a sophomore who is showing up in a lot of plays as well, but Dvorak. Holding on the offense, the penalty is declined, third down. And he forces the hold. And uh, here's top. Well, senior defense tackle from late from the team, and he spent a whole year of football. Said it was the most humbling experience of his life. But to get back on the team, he personalized letters to need a new microphone. On third down and ten, Olson takes off, and penalty flags are flying, and he's down at the 27-yard line, well short of the first down. So they, they can decline the penalty and force the Bruins into fourth and six or so. And uh, it is obviously holding against UCLA. And let's see what the Sooners decide to do with it. Dvorak was out of football for a year. And it, uh, it changed him. He's a different fellow now. And he's, he admitted that he really sorely, sorely, sorely missed football. So he changed his ways. There he is. That's still the best way of disciplining players. Take away what's most dear to them, and that's playing the game. Holding on the offense, number 73. 10-yard penalties enforced in the previous spot. Repeat, third down. So that backs him up considerably. All the way to the 42, and it'll be third down and 20. And basically taking them out of field goal range, or at least putting... Medlock at a uh, very difficult situation. He got Baumgartner in there, that slot spot where he made that big play earlier in the ball game. Now you got some movement along the front, and I think the Bruins' concentration broke. They're going to get called for false start. Well, they hadn't had any penalties up to this point. They've had three in the last three plays. Five-yard penalty, third down. So it'll be third down and 25 now at halftime. You got the Valvoline halftime show with John Craig and Aaron. And they'll have some uh, contact with the LSU Tigers about that fourth quarter comeback for a win at Arizona State last week. The impact it had on the state of Louisiana. It's third down and a half mile now, 25 yards. Olsen back on the throw it. He has time, goes to the sideline. The pass is completed down to the 35 for Marcus Everett, who continues to have a big day. Five catches now. But that completion uh, brings Medlock into range. He's three out of six for fi from 50 yards or more, including his career long of 52. So that uh, third and a half a mile, they picked up a quarter mile, and they got a chance of getting some points now. If he's got a sore, sore wheel, that's a, that's a reach here at 51 yards, but it's a warm day. Maybe he's all loose and ready now. Let's see. Let's see if he can go for 51. Justin Medlock. Oh, yeah. He got it. Yeah, that's where that new rule really hurts uh, the defense of not being able to leap and come down on a teammate or an opponent. Because a kick this long, you've got to kick it low. Medlock just lined that one through. Would have gone through from 60. Six-point lead, Bruins. 51-yard field goal makes it a 13-7 UCL lead. Medlock now will kick it off. Oklahoma has deep Travis Wilson and Reggie Smith. Good long hanging kickoff, back three yards deep in the end zone, and Smith takes it, and Wilson, the senior, says, stay there. It'll come out to the 21st down next Saturday. ABC's regional doubleheader kicks off at noon Eastern, where you'll see either Iowa, Ohio State, or Colorado, Miami. At 12.30, it's Notre Dame, Washington, or Georgia Tech, Virginia Tech. Those of you on the West Coast will see USC at Oregon at 4 Pacific. Yeah, Heisman Trophy winner Matt Leinert. Another finalist, Reggie Bush.
for the Trojans. They've got Arkansas tonight. The Ducks have Fresno State. Senior quarterback Kellen Clemens. Ducks looking for a running game and looking for some help from that great Austin Stadium crowd. And I get to drive to work next week. No, no Rudy. No, no, no. Quack, quack. <laughs> Passes down the sidelines and it is caught by Travis Wilson. Good throw that time by Bomar. He just put enough air under it, giving Wilson time to get there. Move the chains. Yeah, it, as opposed to a pass he threw earlier in the game where he floated a corner route, this one is thrown very well. Nice route by Wilson to get behind the line or the defensive back, Matt Cassell. And the ball was right on target. Not a bad afternoon for Travis. 37 yard line, first down. 38 actually. Back to throw, pressure coming, got away from him. They had him in their sights, two of them, and he split the Bruins and got away and picked up, made something out of nothing. Four yards. Really a great effort that time by Bomar. Shows you not only his running ability, which is pretty good, but his toughness and competitiveness. Refused to go down here. A couple of Bruins going by getting hands on him, finally takes Havener and Whittingham to bring him down. To the 42, make it second down and six. That's Wilson going across the backfield out of the shotgun. Pressure coming to blitz, and the ball is thrown, pass complete, Peterson, and it's going to be first down. Cassell made the tackle. The first contact by Bruin defenders, more often than not, they're not getting him. Slipping the tackles. And uh, the quarterback is continuing to get drilled, though, after he lets it go. Watch this one. Page. Page again. And Whittingham, Whittington. But Peterson broke a tackle that time of Spencer Havner. Something you don't often see. Continue to spread him. On first down. Omar lets it go down the middle. The pass is caught. That's another Oklahoma first down, and it'll be at the UCLA 39-yard line. James Moses. Chuck Long said he wanted to get his tight ends involved more in the passing game because they're such big targets, and they're usually the easier throw. They're not as long a throw as it is out to your wide receivers. They're going no huddle. Pressure's on the Bruin defense. They're moving the ball. The ball is slapped at the line of scrimmage, and it's incomplete. Brigham Harwell got a piece of it when it went by. So that slows things down for just a moment there, and Oklahoma will go back into the huddle. You know, Harwell, 93, with a, really an athletic move there to punch that ball with his left hand, but he was about six yards away from the quarterback. It, show, it really shows you uh, what goes through a defensive lineman's head. If I can't get to the quarterback, at least maybe I can knock his pass down. Second down and ten. Staying in the shotgun. Omar running it. Turned upside down on the tackle by Dennis Keyes. But that's going to be another first down. Now, by going to the Surrey up offense, it appears Oklahoma's offensive line now is wearing down the Bruins. Bomar doesn't care too much about this great tackle because he knows he's got the first down. Watch as he secures the ball with both hands right there. Ball is at the 22. Thrown to the sidelines and caught. Pass complete to jo Joe John Finley. His first uh, appearance under the ball today and he made the catch. Sophomore out of Arlington, Texas. Right now you're seeing a young man's confidence just explode on the scene. Directing the offense, running the ball when he has to on design plays, and his passing has been right on the mark. Peterson now is the single back and gets the ball. Well, he runs downhill, and he takes people with him. He did. He took Bruce Davis with him. Bruce Davis hit him right about the line of scrimmage, it appeared. And uh, Peterson's strength took him for a ride. Six yards, second down, four. 
Back to go to the shotgun. Peterson now in motion, and Bomar looks in that direction, gets some heat, gets it away, intercepted. No, it is not. I'm sorry. It is not. Travis Wilson came across and picked it off right in front of a Bruin defender who was licking his chops. Watch as he steps up in the pocket. He wants to run here. Now he sees number four break open and puts it right on him. That's so important in a crowd, especially down by the goal line. Throw it right on the receiver. Don't lead him at all. And he threw it with some mustard, boy. He put it in there. So here are the Sooners knocking on the door to regain the lead. Tackle behind the line of scrimmage. Penalty flag goes down. Peterson brought down by Justin London, who's got a handful of tackles now. Justin London has just had a superb first half with the run blitz. Holding on the offense, number 64, 10 yards, previous spot, repeat, first down. Chris Chester, center. I would think they would want to take it, back him up as much as possible because they're certainly in field goal range. Number nine is London. And he's just totally unblocked. How can you not block the middle linebacker? <laughs> Omar back, looking, goes, sideline. Wilson, good. It's the eight-yard line on the pitch and catch. Boy, how important has this drive been for the Sooners? Important, though, to take the lead. You don't want to settle for a field goal here and go in down three points. That's why that penalty was so critical on Chester just moments ago. Second down and goal. The ball is at the eight-yard line. Pretty good numbers there, huh? You best possession. You add him to the mix, and they become lethal instantly. Omar looking around, has a man in the end zone, goes high to too high. He couldn't have couldn't throw it into that crowd. Carl Durrell getting uh, escorted back to the sidelines. What coaches are usually yell yelling about there is that they can see offensive holding on the end of the line of scrimmage. And I'm sure that's what uh, Carl was pointing out to the officials. Oklahoma takes the timeout. They've got one remaining. The Bruins have none. You've got 26 seconds to play in the first half. Monday, ABC Sports, ESPN, and the NFL joined to help the victims of Hurricane Katrina with a Monday night football doubleheader. Throughout the evening in a special fundraising telethon, you'll have the chance to donate to the relief efforts for our Gulf Coast neighbors in need. 4.30 Pacific, the Giants will face the Saints, and then at 6, Redskins and the Cowboys. The conclusion of the Giants and Saints game will move over to ESPN from ABC. Those of you in New York and Gulf, the Gulf Coast area will see the Giants-Saints game in its entirety, and then join the Redskins and Cowboys in progress. That'll be Monday night, starting at 4.30 Pacific on ABC. Been a pretty good football game, Keith. You know, yeah. defensively, except for uh, some miscues by Oklahoma, uh, they've been really hurting themselves. UCLA, although they got the field goal at the end of that uh, last drive, penalties hurt them. Well, you figured it'd be a, a paint swapper. That's the way Oklahoma plays football. You, you get a win, you earn it. And TCU beat them. And uh, then Papa came back the third week and showed they're not easy for anybody. So it's third down. And goal from the eight-yard line. Bomar looking around, shopping for a receiver. Getting pressure, down he goes at the 20-yard line. Brigham Harwell broke free to make the tackle. Boy, and that, that's a huge sack because it takes your field goal kicker out of his comfort range. And hurt the quarterback. Yeah, instead of getting a chippy. He's limping coming off the field. Trying to keep that left leg straight. But he's looking all the way to one side of the field. Little pump fake there, and then that, that's inexperience. 
You can't run out of the pocket. You have to run up inside if you're going to escape. As he went down, he called their final timeout. And so they'll come out on fourth down at the 19-yard line. Obviously, they'll try to get three out of this. The quarterback, Bomar, came dragging his left leg to the sidelines, and now he's headed for the locker room in a hurry right now. He's trotting along all right. You may want to do some taping or get a brace of some kind on him there. So here's your field goal try of 37 yards by Garrett Hartley. He's got a lot of leg on it, and he made it. So from 37, it becomes a 13-10 ball game with 15 seconds to play in the first half. UCLA by three. Bobby Stoop said that uh, he didn't want to make excuses, but when you lose players like this, uh, you have a, <laughs> the right to make a few excuses. I mean, you lose Jason White, a great quarterback, and at the wide receiver position, you can see that uh, at times they've struggled today, but Bomar and uh, his senior, Travis Wilson, uh, have gotten into rhythm and gotten things going for the Sooners. But that's a lot of talent to lose on offense. You can see what they do did last year as far as numbers are concerned and the trouble in the passing game that they're having this year. Yeah, this is some of the miscues that they've had. All fumbles. A fumbled shotgun snap, a muff punt by Lendy Holmes, recovered by UCLA, and Adrian Peterson after a long game gets the ball popped loose by Dennis Keyes. They fumbled between the center and the quarterback, and you can see that the fumbleitis has been a big problem for Stoops' team this season. Well, give a gritty Oklahoma defensive bunch some credit because otherwise uh, UCLA could be ahead by much more than three. Now the defense has not been the problem this year, has it? Nope. 35-yard line. Popped up. Fair catch call, 35, 25-yard line, then it's dropped, but it's covered with the Bruins. You can call fair catch on a kickoff, in case you don't know that. Yeah, but you have to catch it. But you have to catch it, yes. That's if you don't, it's live. You get this type of action. It'll be on the 26th where they mark it with 14 seconds to play. Time for two plays, maybe. Yeah, with no timeouts, I wouldn't be surprised if they just come out, take a knee, go to the locker room, and say, hey, we're up by three. Probably. I don't believe you can keep him quiet all day. Might. I'd yet to see it. Well, he did pop a nice run the last time the Bruins had the ball. His 20, only nice run of the day. 20 yards ago. They're taking the knee. So the first half is over. With UCLA 13, Oklahoma 10. They have met three times previously. The Sooners have won all three times. And uh, have another win in mind coming into Pasadena, California this afternoon. But it was a, a good, tough first half of play. Now a question of uh, the carryover. Oklahoma finished with momentum in the second quarter of play. And if they come back on the field with the same kind of momentum to start the third quarter. Here's Todd Harris. Coach, what do you have to fix for the second half? Well, we have to take care of the ball. That was our biggest, uh, biggest factor here in the first half. Gave them great field position on a couple of turnovers. Um, we started to hit some passes there. Uh, you know, we're going to have to, we're going to have to do that. And we got to, uh, we got to get some running game going too. Uh, we got to get some plays from, from AD there and, and, you know, and our other backs running the ball. Evaluate your quarterback in the first half. And is he okay? Uh, he's okay. Um, uh, just a minor issue they're, they're taking care of, and uh, it's good to see us get a little bit going there in that two-minute drill. Thanks for your time. All right, thanks. Keith? Halftime 13-10, UCLA leading Oklahoma. Next, Valvoline Halftime Show. John Craig Aaron catch you up on all the news from around the country. The flashback, Josh Heupel.
Named Associated Press Player of the Year in 2000, the Oklahoma quarterback threw for more than 3,000 yards and 20 touchdowns. In his senior season, the All-America grade led the Sooners to a school record 13 wins and a national championship. Text vote to 87654 now on your singular wireless phone to play All-America Trivia for a chance to win a trip to the National. At halftime, getting ready for the second half, 13 to 10, UCLA leading Oklahoma. And Dan Fouts, that precious real estate along the line of scrimmage, has so far pretty much belonged to the defense on both sides. Uh, there's no question about it. It's been really hard hitting. Great penetration by both defenses. Justin London's having a huge first half for UCLA. And if you're Oklahoma, you got to worry about the leg of Adrian Peterson and also the quarterback, Rhett Bomar. He's been taking a pounding in that first half. But he got a pretty good head of steam going into halftime. He did. He did a great job of driving his team down the field and getting three points and putting his team in position to have more confidence in his abilities. And the question remains, of course, whether or not they can continue to control Maurice Drew. They pretty well shut him down, except for one 20-yard burst in the second quarter. So we're ready to go with the Bruins kicking off to Oklahoma. Oklahoma had won the toss at the outset and uh, chosen at that time to defer, which means they'll get the second half kickoff. Justin Medlock, who kicked a couple of field goals, one up 51 yards, handles the kickoff stuff. The ball goes back into the end zone. They'll put it down there and bring it out to the 20-yard line. Here's Todd Harris now with uh, Carl Durrell, recorded a moment ago. Coach, what do you tell the team at halftime? We did some good things, and we did some things where we didn't execute very well. But, uh, you know, this is the team that obviously is better uh, than uh, they played in their first two games, and they're playing well. We got to try to do what we need to do to, to close out this football game. We got to play better offensively. Our defense is playing well, but we need to get some more points on the board and take advantage of some opportunities when we get them. Good luck, Coach. Thanks. Todd, thanks very much. Peterson comes out. Adrian comes out as the deep back. Bomar's out. They were both dinged up in the second quarter of the first half. And most everybody is healthy enough to come out and begin the struggle. This is Peterson coming outside and going down low to make the tackle on him is Trey Brown. Take a look at our Pacific Life game summary, Keith. It's about our stats. Uh, rushing favors OU. No surprise there. No surprise that UCLA is on top in the passing game. Story of the first half has been points off turnovers. Ten of UCLA's 13 points came off of two OU fumbles. And it's second down and seven now for the Sooners from the 23. <laughs> Penalty flag goes down. No play there as Peterson took the handoff, came through the middle. Looked like Chris Bush, the right Fire guard, jumped. Ball start, number 52, offense, five guard penalty. Yeah, Chris was having a little trouble. He was down on the field when they came out of the locker room, and they were kind of stretching him out. Stretching him out too good. <laughs> Can you imagine having a cramp and have to go down into a stance? <laughs> mm. Oh, man. And when you weigh 305 pounds, that's a large cramp. Yep. Second down and 12 after the penalty. Peterson goes in motion and leaves Bomar back there by himself. He's going to take off up the middle of the field and go nowhere this time. London is right there along with Harwell. I tell you, Justin London is just having an outstanding afternoon. Just finding the right spot. Here he is right in the middle. Watch as he comes unblocked again. It's a quarterback draw. There's really nobody to lead on the middle linebacker for Oklahoma. And Larry Kerr has just continues to draw up the right defense for the right situation. There's some of that paint swapping going on. Look at that red on the back of that gold Bruin helmet. <laughs> Five tackles for London. Omar rolling out. Pressure coming. Ball loose. Picked up by the Bruins. Into the end zone. Touchdown. That's Haydner. Keys knocked it loose. Second big hit for Dennis Keys. Both the reset resulted in fumbles. This one is the exacta. You get the knock on the quarterback. Big bounce to Havener and another touchdown for Spencer Havener. Four times he's returned balls for touchdowns. Watch number 11. Keys unblocked. 
drops his helmet right into the chest of Bomar. And now it's a nice, easy trot into the end zone for Spencer Havner. And Medlock in for the point. Trying to make it a 10-point lead. Kick is good. UCLA 20 and Oklahoma 10, and we've only barely begun the second half. Has Dennis Keyes in the middle of that group. He's the young man that knocked the ball loose, and Spencer Havner took it into the end zone on the fumble recovery, and it's 20 to 10. UCLA leading, and Justin Medlock now will kick it off. There's Justin. Cut off his hair and grew a beard. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> you and you going to touch your hair. It'll fall out, don't worry. <laughs> Working with you, are you kidding? College football on ABC Sports bro. Wow. <laughs> brought to you by Chrysler. Inspiration comes standard. Allstate, a proud sponsor of the Bowl Championship Series. And Singular, raising the bar. From the 20, Oklahoma will try again here now. See if they can get a little more orderly start in the second half. They got to find a way of control, and Jared Page, Dennis Keyes, and Justin London, three guys right in the middle making plays. In to the middle of the line goes uh, Peterson. They pretty well held him in check today, so far. So far has a lot of meaning there. Same way that with Peterson can pop it any time on you, and uh, so can Maurice Drew. The question for Oklahoma is can this man survive? At 6'2", 215, he's taken some unbelievable shots today. He showed his toughness and his inexperience. And unlucky on that one. On second and eight, rolls out, looking downfield, throws, has a man wide open. I mean, Travis Wilson was lonesome. And it's moved the chains time as the play goes to the 43 and a first down for Oklahoma. But you got to be impressed with Bomar's mobility as he, he's going to roll out to the left this time after the play fake, a bootleg. That really got uh, UCLA sucked into the middle of the field. As you can see, Wilson is 10 yards in the open. Good play for the Sooners. This is Peterson. He continue to handle him. Justin London one more time. Havner also there for those two linebackers. They still haven't found a way of blocking number nine in the powder blue jersey, though. He's just too fast for the offensive lineman. And there's Jared Page, strong safety as well. Second down, 11. Bomar pitches it outside on a little bit of the action action, but they, they track down Peterson pretty quickly, and again, it's London and Habner, the UCLA backers, and we're off to see John Saunders. Keith, time for the singular All-America Player of the Week update. Might it be Reggie McNeil of Texas A&M? At 80 yards, he goes to Irvin Taylor here. McNeil passed for 349 yards and five touchdowns, also ran for 100 yards and a touchdown. Text the word VOTE to 87654 now on your singular phone for your ballot and a chance to win a trip to the national championship. Keith. Good. 66 points. Wow. Omar's pass batted up in the air incomplete. That's the third time today the uh, defensive linemen have knocked that ball down. And Oklahoma's going to have to punt it away. Number 48 is William Steed. He's six foot four and uh, very good athlete. Again, a, a defensive lineman, not anywhere near the quarterback, but uh, using their natural ability to knock it away. 
That's so frustrating, especially for a young quarterback. Great bit of putt. Maurice Drew is standing uh, down that 17 yard line. The fourth punt of the day. Long one was 46. This one may give uh, Drew a little chance. Had to split him, but he couldn't do it. He runs into traffic at about the 15 yard line with a big thump and goes down. Alan Patrick leading the tacklers for Oklahoma. Yeah. At 10.39 to go in the third quarter, the Bruins are up by 10. It is a warm afternoon now here at the Rose Bowl, but not like it has been. It's about 15 degrees cooler than it has been in recent days, weeks. UCLA's football, first down at the 16-yard line. They lead in the ball game 20 to 10. And let's see if they figured out some way to get some control on that defensive surge that the Sooners have put on them all day. Olsen with a little play action, finds a man wide open, hits him, knee goes down up around the 28, 29 yard line, but it's enough for a first down. Joe Cowan, if he keeps his balance and keeps his feet, he might still be running. <laughs> That's what Drew Olsen was saying. Man, you, you, know, you can't go down on me like that. You just gotta stay on your feet. That ball wasn't thrown that low. Did get the first down. Good numbers for Drew Olson. You don't want to jinx him, but uh, you got to state the fact he has yet to throw an interception. And really, you know, there hasn't been anybody in a Sooner uniform that's been close to picking one off today. First down from the 29. Drew the deep back. Gets the ball and goes down behind the line of scrimmage. Dvorasek. Dusty came in and just was there when the ball arrived and threw him on the ground. He's got a great first step and plus he's a 300 pounder right in the middle of the screen here. Watch as he splits the block, gets up by the center, McCloskey. And just ragdolls Drew to the ground. Ball is inside the 25, and uh, the rushing yards for the Bruins, pretty meager. 15 yards. Olsen throws it, completes it. Caught by Joe Cowan. He had a man right in his pocket when the ball got there. D.J. Wolf held on, and now they'll be looking at third down. And he had to zip that ball past the ear of linebacker Demario Pleasant and get it in front of Wolf. That was a fine throw by Drew Olson. Third and six. <laughs> Penalty flags on that. That could be considered inducement or it could have been a false start uh, to start the whole thing. And it could have just been old-fashioned encroachment on the defense. There was no play prior to the snap. False start on the offense. Five yep. yards, third down. Somebody wiggled. Tonight, ESPN has a meeting of what some feel of the top two teams in the ACC. Bobby Bowden's Florida State Seminoles going into New England for a showdown with Boston College. Boston BC making its ACC debut. College football primetime presented by Polaroid on ESPN tonight at 445 Pacific Time. And more information, you can log on to ESPN.com. Oh, Bobby doesn't look too happy in that picture, does he? Nope. Well, he's been... His team's not really solid right now. That's a pitch back to Drew. Cut back. Got a little bit of daylight. And then takes a pounding up around the 34 or 35 yard line. Dvorak. Dvorak. Making the stop. Lost his shoe on the play. Watch number 94 come out of his shoe as he's chasing down Maurice Drew. There goes the shoe. Stayed with the tackle. He doesn't need shoes. Fourth down brings in the punter. 
Perez has a long of 43. A couple of them have been kind of low, but this one's a pretty good carry, but he didn't keep it in the field to play. It got out of bounds, and it, it's quite a, it's not a very long punt. Take a look at our IBM Star Watch. Let's check out Adrian Peterson's rough afternoon for the Sooners. He's got 15 carries on the afternoon for just 45 yards. Remember, this man last week against Tulsa had 180 yards rushing in the second half alone. This defense he's facing today is no Tulsa, though. That was a 35-yard punt by Perez. And Adrian Peterson checks in as the deep back for the Sooners. He gets it. He's in the middle. And takes a couple of thumps as he gets about seven yards on the carry. Spencer Havner among those thumping him. First question you asked me today, Keith, was can UCLA stop the running game? You can see the problems they had last season, giving up four 200-yard days to different running backs, all very good running backs. Obviously, this defense is much improved, holding down the great Adrian Peterson so far. Got it again. Bruins get him short of the line of scrimmage. You know, you. I'm sorry, Keith. You know, they wanted to get, try to get the ball to the outside today, but the speed of London and Jared Page, they've just been able to shut down the outside run. Here comes London, number nine again, and again, he just runs right through the offensive line. I don't think he's been blocked yet today, do you? <laughs> Not often. Kewan Jones checks in at the running back spot now, and Adrian Peterson comes out for a breath. Now they've got him sorted out. That gives him four wideouts out of the shotgun. Omar's pass is away. He's got one over there, and it is James Moses. And Moses, a big guy who can rumble 237 pounds, takes it down into UCLA territory at about the 43. That, that was really cool by Bomar. He had to get his receivers all set. They appeared to be out of sync a little bit, but he did get them set, got the ball snapped, read the defense, and found Big Moses down the sideline. And who's in on the tackle? Number nine, Justin London. He's everywhere. He's a very underrated. He doesn't get as much acclaim as some of the other folks, in particular Haven. But he is a good football. Here comes that reverse. Travis Wilson coming toward us. And he's tripped up. After a gain of about three yards by Rodney Van. Just got his shoe tops and took him down. Wilson had that 56-yard touchdown on the reverse in the first half. It's a nice tackle by Van as he totally sells out, dives at Wilson's feet, and brings him down. Manuel Johnson goes in, one of the wide spots. Oh, in the middle with Peterson, and he's going to have a first down. Spencer Havner made the tackle. Well, they found out a way of blocking number nine, Justin London, and it paid off for them. London coming on another blitz there. He gets taken out by the uh, left guard, Davin Joseph. And it's a first down for OU. Ball at the UCLA 33. Havener, good player. Dude, those, that linebacking bunch for UCLA has been good. Have been for some time. And for the Sooners. And this is traffic. And not much there. Dragovic comes in and uh, handles things. Nikola Dragovic, a sophomore out of Vista, California. And to give you an illustration of how well coordinated this defense is, a lot of times on those wide plays, when you got a player like Peterson or Kiwan Jones, you'll see them cut back when the pursuit is too much. But Dragovich was there looking for the cutback, 
And Larry Kerr's got to be extremely pleased with how his defense is running. Nine tackles in the backfield for UCLA today. Four and a half minutes remaining, third quarter. Bruins up by 10. Ball's loose. Bomar dives and retrieves it. That's being a youngster. A couple of good plays, and then you get one of those. And it's one of those that'll absolutely kill a drive. This brings up a third and real long now. Lucky to beat London and Harwell to that fumble. That was a seasonal code, it's not all of it today. Ball just the fraction inside the 39 on the UCLA side. And third down, 16. This is Bomar running, got away, look out. Oh, He's got his first down. And more. A flag for a late hit there, Keith. Yep. A great call by Chuck Long. The blitz was coming. They were bringing safeties, linebackers, everybody. And the option, when you crack that line of scrimmage, there's nobody there. After the play, first. Good block on the outside by Kelly. Here comes the late hit, Dennis Keyes with the shot. Well, it's just the mere fact that they were a step out of bounds. They really didn't do much to him, but it's still a penalty. Too bad you can't judge intent on those kind of calls because oftentimes you anticipate something happening and nothing does. But if it's in the no-no land like that, it's automatic. Now there's one intent for defensive guys, and that's to maim. <laughs> <laughs> this is Peterson finding his way to the end zone. They finally give it to him. Took a little while. But he just got in at the marker. That shows you his strength. Yeah, deep handoff in the eye formation. Good blocking there by Chester. The tight end, Moses gets involved, and then Peterson takes over. He takes two Bruins on at the goal line and gets in. And now the extra point try by Hartley. And they close it to three points. At, it. At 3.25 to go in the third quarter, it's now a three-point ball game as it ebbs and flows in the Rose Bowl. The Adrian Peterson showing the wear and tear of the afternoon. Time permitting, we'll bring you the 50 car rental postgame report with John Craig and Aaron. Highlights, analysis, etc. at all. Ball's put on the 35 for the kickoff now with Marquis and Derek Williams waiting for it. High kick. Up. And the five. No cut. Trying to get back into the middle and find the crack. And didn't really quite get there. He'll go down at about the 17-yard line. Take a look at our Chrysler passing playbook back in the first quarter. Watch after the play fake to Maurice Drew, the pocket that Drew Olsen has to operate in, and the clear passing lane he has to find Andrew Baumgartner for this 19-yard touchdown. That made the score 7-7, and it was Baumgartner's first touchdown reception of his young career. All right, first down from the 17 for the Bruins. Their lead is now only three. Olsen throws, swings it out there to Dietrich, pullback. And he barely got back to the line of scrimmage. They're going to give him a pretty good mark on it, though. Pick up a couple of yards. Rufus Alexander hitting him. Yeah, Rufus said, uh, when he hits you, he's, you're going to stay hit. He is all over the field. Haven't called his name often today, but uh, he's been part of that good run defense. He is from Baton Rouge. Second down and eight. 
Out across the Bruins, five. Prior to the snap, false start. Number 68 on the offense. Five yard penalty, second down. Ryan Abraham, a sophomore. Bruins, uh, one of the few teams that flopped their offensive lines. He's the strong side tackle, Ed Blanton. He's a lot bigger, he's the weak side tackle. Pass thrown behind. Maurice drew, and he had Maurice out there in a one-on-one -on -one circumstance where he might have made something out of that. But the ball was a little bit behind him. Yeah, it was a good read by Olsen. Went to the right guy. Just it, uh, threw it too hard, too high, and too far behind Drew. He's only 5'8", so it's a little target. You've got to put the ball on him. That's not a very good series for UCLA. They're going to have to punt the ball away, and it's sitting on the 14-yard line. UCLA having a tough time converting third down plays. Only one out of nine. They're looking at third and 13 now. They need something pretty hefty. Otherwise, they'll be giving Oklahoma some pretty good field position. Down the middle, got it. That's Andrew Baumgartner. Remember, you just saw him a minute ago score his first touchdown of the season on the pass reception. Now comes up with a huge play for UCLA. Yeah, and he's operating from the left side of the screen coming in from the slot, but look how Olsen has that throwing lane, that offensive line doing a perfect job of giving him time, but also giving him vision down the field. You got a sooner shaken on the play, and time will be taken for him. Bassey. Eric Bassey. A corner who's shaken up on the play. So time out for him at 2.06 to play in the third quarter. And UCLA now with a first down. They're off the hook a bit out to the 36. There's the Bruins schedule. See, they go up to Washington. They have Washington rather here in California here. California, one of the best teams in the conference. And, of course, at the end of the year at the Coliseum against USC. Well, I, in, in watching this team for a good long time, uh, the last game of last season, the game they played against USC is the toughest ball game I think UCLA has played in five years. They have a chance to beat the Trojan. Okay. They're playing in similar fashion today. Yes, they are. This is Chris Marquis for a yard, that's all, to the 37. Three point ball game, still very, very much in doubt. The outcome. Now, how big was that uh, turnover at the start of the second half when Whoa. Dennis Keyes hit Bomar and Havener takes the fumble in for a score? Huge. And then this last play was, was quite large, too. Second down and nine, and they throw underneath. It goes to Mercedes Lewis, who's been quiet today, but he's going to have a first down here as he gets it out to the 47-yard line. Yeah, he came into the game with nine receptions, had a big first game against San Diego State. This is only his fourth catch of the day, but you can see what he offers to the quarterback. Big target and then pretty good running ability afterwards. He's a big man. I would love to see him uh, have the ball thrown in his direction a lot more, especially when the Bruins get down in the red zone. 6'6", 256. He can play jump ball with anybody. First down. Changing the play. Throws quickly outside. Come back inside with it. Uh, they'll stop at about the 45. It's Brandon Brazil. Brandon Brazil is not very big. He's six feet, 165 pounds, sophomore out of Fresno, but he'll leave you in his dust. Yeah, and he'll take, make the tough catch. That time uh, he communicated with his quarterback. There's something that uh, Olsen's seeing in, in Oklahoma's defense that tells him he's got man-to-man -man 
single and very soft coverage on the outside. Corners are playing way off. Or Maurice Drew just can't find an inch. It'll bring up third down as Ayu jumped all over him. And third quarter is history. ABC Sports presentation of college football returns after this message and a word from our ABC station. Here we go, third down and two as we start the fourth quarter. Drew Olson throws, passes caught, fight for the yardage by Brazil, and he's got it. Marcus Walker shaken up after he hit him first, but Brazil had enough fight in him to go on and get that first down. Yeah, he's the tenth re different receiver that Olson's found today. Number one right there, not Lewis, but rather Brazil. How tough is this 165 pounder there, Keith? Looked like he was stopped short of the first down. Well, he didn't. And Walker, who made the first hit on him, is uh, in some pain on the bench. They're working on him. And it's first down for the Bruins, 41 yard line. Oh, there's nothing there. That's Michael Petrie, the fullback, and they just ran him sideways. Dvoracek, Aodell, Thibodeau, Bennett, are you pleasant? They've been pretty rough. And of course, Rufus, only allowing less than two yards a carry to the Bruins. Nothing wrong with this defense. Second down and ten. Marquis. Olsen's pass thrown underneath. It goes to Marquis, who had gone up the middle, then stopped short. And Olsen found him, and he's got another UCLA first down. Darian Williams making that stop. Check out uh, Chris Marquis. Just a sophomore, but uh, knows where the down markers are, makes a couple of Sooners miss and pick up the first down. He's smooth. Cowan in motion. Motion keeps it. Going to run it. Dives to the marker. He's going to be short of it. He went out of bounds at about the 20-yard line. He's two yards short of the first down. Got to hold your breath to see your quarterback doing that. Yeah, especially if uh, Ben Olsen is not ready to play just yet. But you know what? He's got, he knows he's got people in front of him that can help him and keep the Sooners off him. And he also knows the sideline's coming up soon. UCLA with a quick touchdown to start the second half to a 20 to 10 lead. The Sooners have responded. It's now 20 to 17. UCLA's got a little something going here at second down and two. And they keep insisting on trying to run the football, and uh, the Sooners uh, just are not going to let them. They've got to get anything out of a, a ground game at all, Dan. They're going to have to start going outside, aren't they? Well, you would think, but uh, Mario Pleasant, who's filling in for Clint Ingram today, has got nine tackles from an outside linebacker position. On the other side, Rufus Alexander's having a solid day, and so it's it's just tough with the speed of these linebackers for UCLA to get outside. Third down and two. Olsen throwing for the corner of the end zone. Wide open. Touchdown. Mercedes Lewis. You know, as bad as UCLA's running the ball, I'm not sure why Oklahoma's so susceptible to the play action fake, but they were all up on the line of scrimmage. UCLA gave them a strong run look in their formation, but uh, Olsen had his pick of receivers on this play. Picked the right guy, big Mercedes Lewis, for the easy score. First touchdown reception of the year for Lewis. At 12.32 to play in the ball game. Medlock to the point. Got it. 
So it's back to a 10 point ball game. 27 to 17. Four. Here's the big guy that caught the touchdown pass a moment ago to give UCLA its 10 point lead again. Second time today they have led by that margin. Medlock will kick it off. It is Reggie Smith and Travis Wilson waiting for it back at the Oklahoma five. We're in the fourth quarter with 12 and a half minutes to play. It is Smith at the two. Look out. Got a big hole. Kept this balance. Big run down the sidelines. Finally stopped. Right about midfield. Well, he got through that first wave, and it looked like he had a chance to go home. Yeah, he stumbled just a little bit as he gets through this hole. But what a great start after a touchdown for Oklahoma to have the ball at the 45-yard line. They needed this type of play to get some type of momentum back. Adrian Peterson now refreshed after some rest on the bench. The deep back for the Sooners. Omar almost stumbled getting the ball back to him. Now the ball is pitched by Peterson to Omar, and he's thrown down all the way back on the 35 by Jared Page. So that one blew up in their face. Yeah, this is not what the uh, way they drew it up in the uh, locker room. You got to eat it right there. Lucky that this isn't uh, fumbled and returned for a touchdown. Bomar saying to Peterson, hey, what are you doing here? Jared Page with the big play right there to bring him down for a big loss. Second down and 19 as the ball comes back to the 36 yard line. Bomar looking around has a man throws to Wilson. Travis Wilson will take it up to midfield. And he got open. Justin London getting one more tackle. You know, you have the great kickoff return, and then you have a play that, yeah, you know, you're probably going to lose two or three yards on it. And then you turn it into a nine yard loss. It really sets your offense back and puts you in a tough third down conversion try here. Third down and a long five. Only three out of 11 on third downs for the Sooners. They go to the shotgun, double wide, both sides. Passes away, thrown to Peterson. Peterson is grabbed short of the first down by Spencer Havener. And Havener showing his strength, takes him down. It's going to be fourth down and about three. Here's Havener on the outside. Here you see he drops back. This is his own coverage. London in the middle, just dropping back. And then responding to the throw to the outside. And the Sooners are looking like they want to go for it on fourth down. Peterson's a deep back. Omar back there with him. Put man in motion. That's Moses. Omar keeps it. Now pitches to Peterson. Ball hits the ground. Peterson does not have control of it. And the Bruins take over. That was a very good series for the UCLA defense. Wow. Man. Trying to run the option play on third and three down the line. Will go Bomar. Brigham Harwell forced the uh, pitch. Check that. That's uh, Nikola Dragovic. And it was a bad pitch. And uh, Peterson, all he could do was bat it out of bounds to prevent UCLA from taking it for a score. And the Bruins own the football right on the 45 yard line of Oklahoma with 10 minutes to play in the ball game and UCLA leading 27 17. Drew Olson holds it down, throws to the sidelines, and I think that's out of bounds incomplete. Marcus Everett was over there. Boy, seven fumbles, three of them lost. 
Michigan State 38, Notre Dame 24. 17 of UCLA's 27 points have come off those turnovers, Keith. You know, that old nemesis, the old passing thing that Michigan State does so well. Now look at this, Illinois is beating California 17 to seven at halftime. It's early yet. Yep. Time call by the referee, Jack Pulliard. College football on ABC Sports brought to you by Pontiac. Go online to nominate your Pontiac game-changing performance. Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper, one taste and you get it. Pacific Life for insurance, annuities, and investments. Choose Pacific Life, the power to help you succeed. And Outback Steakhouse, no rules, just right. Well, I got a minute. I want to give you the rest of the officials because they've they've done to put in a full day's work too. Al Granado is the umpire. Headlinesman Royce Cooley. Stephen Kovac, the line judge, made a critical call on the game. Side judge Aaron Santi. Field judge Daniel Spistabak. And the back judge is Greg Wilson. Tough game, Keith, and they break the chains on the <laughs> sidelines. That's, yeah. that's why we got this time out. Get out the tape. Yeah, look, they got it over there. Got Gaffer's tape. Loan them some, will you? Executive producer of ABC Sports is Mike Pearl. Our senior producer of ABC Sports, Bob Toms. Coordinating producer of college football on ABC, Bob Goodrich. Today's game produced by Mark Loomis. Directed by Derek Mumbley. And our technical director, John Zippe. Associate producer, Andy Bach. Associate director, Jeff Kibler. Production assistants, Phil Policino and Ben Hogg. Production manager Joe Alvarado, tech manager Al Fong. Kelly Hayes handling the spotting boards, and Mark Amento is the man with the flying pen. Yep. Time permitting, we'll bring you the 50 car rental post game report. John Craig and Aaron, they'll have the, as much of the story of the day as time allows. You know, not only does Mark Amento uh, keep the numbers for us, he also hands me a couple of. Uh, Good notes here. You know that today's game is a paint swapper and a chain breaker. That'll do. <laughs> I think we've been hanging around you too long. <laughs> but uh, you, you called it. It was going to be a good one, a good head knocker. That's what it's been. Our computer stats today, Matt Jenkins and Fred Amos, our booth stats by Mark and uh, Kelly, our squatter. We told you that. Tim Weinkopf, our studio show producer. We'll do the rest of it. We're going to have a chance. All right, UCLA to the attack on second down, and the ball is intercepted on the ricochet. Bounce right into the hands of DeMario. And DeMario makes a big play out of it, taking it down to the UCLA 25-yard line. And suddenly, Oklahoma is right back in it. This but is there is a penalty flag. Yeah, I think it's going to be after the interception, Keith. This was uh, play was made by Chijoki Onyenagetcha. As he had tight coverage on the receiver, was it too tight? Yep. Yeah, was this post-possession, post-interception, or before the interception? Don't know. It looks like they're coming all the way back. Mm, sure does. Before Boy. the change of possession, holding my defense, 10 yard penalty, previous spot, first down. And I think they're gonna get number 22. He's holding his head. He certainly is. There's going to be a wide receiver quick screen. Anya to get you is in great position, but too close. That caused the ball to be deflected to uh, Demario Pleasant. Puts the ball at the 35-yard line and is a huge, huge moment in this ballgame. Drew Olson rolls out, looking downfield. Whoa, drilled that thing right into Joe Cowan's stomach. Reggie Smith tried to cut him in half and could not dislodge the missive. Let's go back to that last play, Keith. The screen is to the outside to Marcus Everett. 
That's not on uh, Anya Nagetcha. They must nope. have gotten somebody else on the interior. Did not tell us what number. You can see how close the coverage was. What a big break for UCLA. And a first down on that catch by Cowan. And now you've got uh, people jumping the snap. And Olsen yelling at him. And not just anybody, the biggest guy out there, Ed Blanton. Offense number 73, five-yard penalty, first down. Yeah, Blanton is a strong side tie, a weak side tackle at uh, 6'9", 332. And Ed probably said, my ears are humming. Couldn't hear you. Hey, Olsen gets right up into him, too. And uh, that's the last thing Blanton wants to hear. Watch him push the quarterback away. Leave me alone. I know I went off sides. Time remaining, 9-10. Ten-point lead. Bruins get something here. Time will definitely be their ally. They run there. Uh, Maurice Drew and uh, Drew Olsen run together and stifle that play. So things are not going really well right now for the Bruins after that big break. Remy A. Odell is right on top of that one. Hey, Odell, lucky he didn't get called for a face mask. Didn't grab it, but had his certainly had his arm wrapped around Drew's helmet. That loss is all the way back to the 34-yard line, so they'll be looking second down and 20. Come on, come on, come on. away, got his man open. That's Maurice Drew. Drew breaks the tackle. And down to the 10-yard line. Oh, my goodness. D.J. Wolf couldn't hold him. And they finally brought him down, Jason Carter. Right. This offensive line's got to get a lot of credit for that big play there. Olsen has thrown the ball a lot today, but a lot of the times he's been able to come to his outlet receiver. Doesn't throw it too high this time for Drew. Olsen's only been sacked twice this afternoon. And that's the one way to make up for a bad play. Chris Markey is in at the running back spot, gets the ball, Just gets in there and turns away for about three yards down near the seven before Dvorak makes the tackle, leads the tacklers. This could be the big enemy right now for Oklahoma is that clock. That's why they're running the ball here. Every time you snap the ball, run it on the ground, or complete passes as Olsen's doing all day, that clock continues to run. Sooners have their three times out remaining, but they don't want to spend them yet with seven and a half minutes to go. Olsen wants to throw, does throw. To the corner. Touchdown, Chris Markey. Had to wait for the linesman to tell us whether or not he got it inside the pylon, and he did. What an afternoon for number 14, surveying the field, as he said, seeing all 53 yards wide of this field, coming again to a running back out of the backfield. Chris Markey pays it off. Or try good. It is a 17 point lead for UCLA at 34 to 17. Huge call, that holding call on Oklahoma. UCLA now in the catbird seat with 7.16 to play, leading by 17, and they will kick it away to Oklahoma. Got so many points today off of Oklahoma turnovers. Their first potential turnover of UCLA is reversed on a phantom holding call. Two yards deep in the end zone, they'll bring it out. That's Reggie Smith. He almost got loose the last time. He's got some rope over there and a high stepper. Fumbled the ball, but he was down. Boy, he almost stepped out of there again. Time for our Pacific Live game summary, and it's been the keys to the game. Dennis Keys and the big hits that he has had. Hits is in the first quarter on Adrian Peterson. Pops that ball loose. UCLA took it in for a touchdown. And then to start the second half, 
This big shot on Brett Romar. And Spencer Havner has another touchdown for UCLA. From the 16, underneath, Peterson looking for some daylight. Found a little bit, found some more. And he gets up to near the 25-yard line, a yard or so short of the first down. Then his keys finally tracked him down. But that kind of effort, that kind of run, this late in the day, is going to take a lot of strength out of even Adrian Peterson. Because that's a tremendous amount of energy in what he just did. And now they got to have to go to a hurry-up, no-huddle offense. Yep. Down by 17. Yeah. Tackle right about the line of scrimmage. The reach for the first down marker, not quite enough. Kyle Morgan made the hit. Washington beating up on Idaho today. A game out here in the West, and uh, Alabama doing the same to South Carolina. That's a final. Penn State won. All the new 63 points against Penn State. They're running it with Peterson trying for the first down, and they've got it. And you got penalty flags flying here. Like the, Nathaniel Skaggs jumped on top of Peterson when he's on the ground. And that's a good call by the officials. So this will give the Sooners a free 15 yards. After the, foul, after the play, personal foul, number 74 on the defense, 15 yards, first down. But oh. you're right, Keith, about the energy that uh, Peterson is putting out here. Look, trying to keep his balance. And now he gets a guy that weighs 275 jumping right in the middle of his back. Skaggs, a redshirt freshman, trying to get his britches dirty. They say that uh, no one works harder in the weight room than uh, Peterson. He's close to Superman, but not there yet. He's out of the ball game right now as the pass is thrown down the middle of the field and completed deep down to about the 35-yard line to Joe John Finley. another one of the tight ends it's the second pass of the day and James Moses has played well today and Willie Roberts has yet to make a catch it is Keelan Jones now in there in the backfield and the running back position with Bomar out of the shotgun Bruins got him Jared Page flying in on a blitz takes him down for a loss back to the 43 44 Watch him come on the blitz right after the quarterback. Bomar's got to read the weak safety blitz like that and find a hot receiver. 5-20 in counting in the game. Peterson back. Bomar gets it off. Peterson's got it. Running for daylight. Four Bruins. And they take him down just about the original line of scrimmage. No, they don't either. He's well beyond behind that. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and he's getting frustrated right now, Keith. That was a screen pass. It's supposed to be set up to run to the left side. He totally ignored the design of the play and tried to do it all by himself and just way too many Bruins in there. Can whoop five. It's third down and 19 after that play. Because of a big loss on the sack. Four and a half minutes to play. Keep finding Inglesis. That'll be his third catch of the day, I believe. He wiggles around and finds room, and uh, Bomar hits him sharply. I think Bomar has found himself today, though, Dan. Yeah, he certainly has paid the price with a lot of big hits, but he's shown some cool here. Realizing that the Bruins are only going to rush three guys there, he didn't rush that throw. He, he let Iglesias find the hole and uh, come up with his fourth down try now. Sooners take a timeout with 4.02 to play. Something about the storied history of the Oklahoma Sooners, of course, uh, I'm, I go back 
quite familiarly with the Bud Wilkinson era. And then, of course, Bud worked with us for a good long time after he quit coaching. But you don't have to worry too much about him. They're playing a lot of young people, but uh, he'll be around. Ball thrown to the sideline. It goes out of bounds inside the 20 at about the 16-yard line, and that'll be a first down. And they're moving right along. We go inside uh, four minutes to play in the game. It's a 17-point lead. But this is college football. Things happen. Well, right now, though, they can't afford not to take shots into the end zone. Yep. They must score before three minutes are left in this game. Crowd today is 56,522. Omar runs that quarterback throw up the middle. Touchdown. Yeah, that's why the Sooners are going to be okay because this young man has grown up today. What an effort. He had uh, Bruins slapping at his legs about four times on this option play. There's one, two, and three, and then four, and in the end zone. What an effort by Bomar. And they get the touchdown at 3.49 to play in the game. And they have all three timeouts left. And it is Marcus Cassell shaken up on in the end zone, the UCLA Bruin, and time taken for Marcus. Left leg. Rubbing on that calf, you would suspect that's a cramp. UCLA will play next Washington. Oklahoma plays next Kansas State on the 1st of October. That's when the conference play starts in the Big 12. And then Texas. Yes, sir. We'll be there. Remember that Texas uh, was handled by these Sooners last year. Different people. 12 to nothing. They packed 10 today, was scattered uh, against the opposition from all over the country. Louisville laid it on Oregon State. Beavers jumped out 10 nothing, then lost, as you can see, very big. California is losing by 10 to Illinois at halftime. Big ball game tonight, Fresno State and Oregon. Purdue and Arizona, Northwestern Arizona State, and USC, number one in the country, will be playing Arkansas over at the Coliseum. I suspect Arkansas will give the Trojans a lot of trouble because of their ability to run the ball, and they're going to be running right at a very green defensive unit up front, at least for uh, USC. And a safety, Darnell Bing, probably not going to play today. Here at the 17, was a 17-point lead. It's now going to be, if they make the point, 34-24, be a 10-point lead again. And a goodly amount of time left, and they are apparently going to go for one. If you don't point, not to. Cassell walked off the field, okay. And here's the extra point by Hartley Good. So the sophomore out of South Lake, Texas, brings the Sooners back within 10. Well, here we go. 349. Uh, the question obviously comes up at this point. Onside kick, I, I think it's too early myself. Well, not only that, Keith, but uh, the Sooners have three timeouts. Yep. So if they kick this deep, pin UCLA deep, which they have been very good at all year long, play good defense, they'll get the ball back with time and timeouts. UCLA needs the win to step up in Carl Durrell's third year. Oklahoma needs the win to right the ship and soothe the water so they can develop as they get ready to go into uh, conference play. L.A. do go for the onside kick. It's in the air and out of bounds. They had a real shot at it too, Keith. Bounced off of Bruin up into the air. I think Travis Wilson, that's number four, Wilson. He's the one that's got the best chance at it. Chris Marquis, the ball hit him right in the chest and went off his shoulder pad. And Wilson, number four on the outside here. 
not quite able to keep it in bounds. What an effort though. So UCLA gets the football at the 49 yard line their own 49 with 349 to play in the game and here's a run. This is Drew Maurice Drew in a foot race to the corner and they're tracking down at the 12 yard line. Can you contain him all day. I guess the answer is no 38 yards on that play. Yeah, now when you're crowding the line of scrimmage how about Drew after he breaks through here. He's going to go cross country eats up time on the clock by doing that then stays in bound the clock obviously stops for the first down but they're winding it now after they set the chains. They put it on the 13 they don't give him the slide. It was cool though. <laughs> well he knew what he was doing. First down from the 13 now of Oklahoma. UCLA looking for room to run and that is uh, Chris Marquis carrying there inside the 10 to the 9 and let us spend a moment visiting with John Saunders. Keith, the funny a game changing performance update could be this one. Nebraska blocks a last second field goal by Josh Cummings. It would have been a 46 yarder as Dave Wanstack goes to 0 and 3 on the season. Pittsburgh actually got two attempts at that field goal because they muffed the last one with about seven seconds left. Got it down to one second. Kicked it. Blocked. 7-6. Your Pontiac game-changing performance update. Keith. Well, here's Maurice Drew into the end zone. Touchdown UCLA. Oklahoma's now tired. Tired and done. Maurice Drew's mama right here in the middle of that picture. There she is. Two thirty three to play. And the Bruins are looking for their forty first point. They go back to a seventeen point lead. Kick is good. 41 24. Uh, very few might have expected this, but as the day has worn on, uh, things have happened. That penalty call that kept UCLA in the middle of the field and in possession of the ball after the Sooners had it down on about the 35 yard line was huge in the game. But from that point on, the Bruins have just taken over, and then this terrific run by Drew puts the ball in position and Marquis runs a play and then Maurice goes back in and sticks it in the end zone. So the Bruins a team that's been accused of not being able to close the deal look like they've learned something. Well the question you asked at the beginning of the game Keith was can they stop a good running team. The answer is yes they can. Not only a good running team but one of the best running backs in the nation Adrian Peterson was held down. That is the difference in the UCLA football team that I see. They've seemingly always been able to get points on the school board, play offense, all that stuff, but to get in there and just hunker down and gut it out on defense. And this crowd is doing it. Because when you go out and play Oklahoma, you're going to have to roll around in the mud and the blood. You know that. Yeah, and the big guys up front, Hickman, Harwell, Moline, Dragovich, they contain that offensive line and let London and Havener run freely and make a lot of tackles. Out of the end zone comes Reggie Smith. Oh, he's, they got to throw a penalty on that. They just tripped <laughs> had his leg and tripped him. It's a trip. Wow. See it. Officials are getting tired too, I guess. <laughs> Michael Morris. <laughs> Norris made that tackle. Well, let's see uh, that tackle by Michael Norris. What a heck of a move right there. That right foot, that's that's against the rules, boys. 24-yard line where Oklahoma gets it. It's 225 remaining to play. Omar throws to Wilson. Travis makes the catch, and he's close to a first down with it. I don't reckon you can. These fellows can spell quit. 
they did, they wouldn't be playing in Oklahoma. Another little quick pop over here to Malcolm Kelly. They're moving it down the field and uh, saving time as best they can because now, you know, it, the, the clock stops on each first down as they move the change. You've got 2.08 remaining, but it's they're down by 17 points. Yeah, they just haven't been able to make the play when they had to today. They don't get the onside kick when it looked like Travis Wilson might get it. They have an interception that is called back after Demario Pleasant made an interception, and we could not find who was guilty of holding, and the officials could not identify for us who was guilty of the holding. That's an incomplete forward pass, and it's incomplete because of an all-out blitz on Bomar, the Sooner quarterback, and he comes up limping again, dragging that left foot. Today's Chevrolet players of the game are number four, Travis Wilson of Oklahoma, who scored the opening touchdown in the ball game. Drew Olson, the quarterback of UCLA. In recognition of their efforts, Chevrolet making a thousand dollar contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Travis Wilson, seven for 103 and a touchdown, and we're not finished yet. He'd love to have two or three more. That's Spencer Haydner getting the tackle there on Kiwan Jones. So the ball is at the 41. They've got to go to the 44 to get the first down. And Drew Olson so far on the day with a minute and 48 to play and the clock running. 28 out of 38, 314 yards and three touchdowns. And no interceptions. In fact, UCLA still on this young season has not turned the ball over yet. Big difference, huh? They do that. Same is going to punt it. Yep. Ooh, that's beauty. That's the best one of the day. And it's going to go all the way into the end zone. And come out to the 20-yard line, where we will then run out the clock. And here's John Saunders again. Well, Keith, Miami, we're trying to hold on against Clemson. This would have been a game-winning touchdown. Wide open was Chancey Stuckey, but Charlie Whitehurst can't get it to him, so they settled for the field goal. Jad Dean. And this one is tied at 20 apiece and headed to overtime. Keith, back to you. Yeah, that's pretty good stuff. There's a new player, or is there is another player in the Pac-10 conference now. I think it is safe to say what we've seen today. And pretty soon Ben Olson will be healthy again, and uh, that'll upgrade the the uh, core of quarterbacks they have. This is Maurice Drew, who's willing to put his helmet in there and take a shot to get the clock running. Now let's review our uh, game plan. UCLA certainly has blitz burned the blitz of Oklahoma, and on defense they have held the great Adrian Peterson well under 50, uh, 100 yards. How about five different Bruins scoring touchdowns today, Keith? Baumgartner, Havener, Lewis, Marquis, and that man, Maurice Drew. Sooners are going to be happy not to be fooling with these folks in Los Angeles. 0 for 2 against Los Angeles. Losing to SC in that big game last year and then losing today here. Thursday night, the Connecticut Sun pulled out a dramatic overtime win to tie the Sacramento Monarchs at a game of peace in the uh, WNBA Finals. Join ABC Sports in Sacramento for Game 3, presented by Capital One. The clock ticking along. We've hit 15 seconds. It's been a good football game. been most enjoyable. And the UCLA has got to be the happiest village you can think of as this game comes to an end. Maybe a long trip home for the Sooners, but I think they might like what they saw. Building blocks are in place. ABC Sports online at ESPN.com. Search ABC Sports. Join us Monday, 4.30 for a Monday night football special, including two games and the telephone to benefit Hurricane Katrina relief efforts. Watch again your final score. UCLA 41, Oklahoma 24. This is a presentation of ABC Sports Championship Television.